You know what I meant, right? I <laughs> yes. Uh, and I did talk with Donna about this, but so what's in there right now under paragraph three? It, it was agreed to add 110,000 of surplus to the budget, divided equally between tax anticipation reserve and grant match. That's not actually what we did. So I would propose that we agreed to apply 110,000 to reduce taxes with the balance of the surplus being split between buildings and grounds, 20,000, reappraisal fund, 20,000, highway capital equipment fund, 20,000, grant match reserve fund, 548, 199,017 cents, and tax anticipation reserve fund, 10K. Additional industrial park expenses, 75K. That's what we actually voted to approve for a budget with a contingency that it be reviewed by staff. Um, and uh, while it, I think what Donna has in here is probably exactly what I said, uh, but I think the intent was that that contingent review by staff might ultimately change the number that ended up the budget number, which it did change that number. You know. So that would be that would be what those would be the items I would propose to change in the actual minutes. And then I'd like to let our minutes from tonight reflected the changes that staff review brought to light, which ended up being the number we went and put in the warning in the budget. Does that make sense? Would you be willing to accept the initial amendment as a friendly amendment? Yes. Motion or accepts it as a friendly amendment. Seconder accepts it. Were those the only additions or adjustments? Yeah, as far as as far as the actual minutes. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Donna, okay. did you get all those? Do you need? Do you need? Emailed it to me, so the one you read now is just over the email. That's directly out of the email. So those are the numbers. Yeah. Hearing no nays. Motion passes. Uh, our next item is. Do we have to get, do a vote on the overall acceptance of the two, or did this get both of them? You just amended the title that, section. I got both of them. That got both. The okay. Okay. So can I have our tonight's minutes reflect what we actually did as a result of the staff review? Yes. Okay. So as a result of the staff review. The actual total surplus went from 803, 19917 to 812, 44817. And I can give you this sheet, Donna. Um, but we we did apply 110,000 to reduce taxes, 20,000 for the buildings and grounds, 20,000 for reappraisal, 20,000 for uh, capital reserve, 548199 for grant match, 75. All, all of them were basically the same. What, what ended up being different was because the total amount of the estimated surplus increased, then we ended up with 9,249.17 reserved for other purposes in the budget. So that's basically just out there right. um, unassigned is what you're saying well <coughs> by reserving it we're saying that we're going to use it for something i understand that but we haven't identified what that is say just general reserve yeah yeah the, okay. the 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 nuance there mark is if we don't say we're reserving it then it kind of automatically goes back to the taxpayers i, under I understand that i just that maybe you wanted to be more specific. Well, those things came to light as a result of further staff review. So, good. 
that's what we ended up with as the budget in the amount to be raised by taxes, I believe, should be two million one ninety two one eighty five seventy. And I think that's what I think that's what is in the article as the estimated amount to be raised by taxes. With an increase of one point eight percent. No. The total budget was like two point four. Two point three eight or something. Yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable. That's very that's very good. good. Donna, would you like this this yeah, sheet? Was, I'm trying to good. log on to the server, but it won't let me. But as soon as it's I do, I can pull in the up. Ballpark, right? Very close. So, are there any other issues or concerns? Not that that was a crazy issue, but that's where we work. So, Mark, Shane. Duncan, do you have any other issues or concerns? No, I don't. Well, that was minutes. Okay. That was issues and concerns. Okay. Do you have any? I have lots of them, but not for tonight. Our next item is plan purchases. Uh, two items on the plan purchases are town garage overhead door maintenance and hybrid meeting hardware. Maybe you could give us a little background on those. So the town garage overhead door maintenance is um, Jason's been trying to get a hold of um, all the overhead door companies to get quotes. There's gaps at the bottom, the rollers are bent, and the hinges are uh, sometimes they stick. So that building uses about a third of the tank of fuel a day. And, uh, wow. Jason wants to go through and um, just have all the doors just like cleaned up so they close on the ground. Tightens up the building. Um, What's he keeping the temperature at that we burn 100 gallons of fuel oil? I, I think it's like. I, 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 it's never been hot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the doors are just in pretty rough shape. So they, the floor is cold, but the ceiling's warm. Right. He's trying to get three quotes. He got one. I'm waiting for a text back from him. Um, it was 2600 and change. And that's to redo all the rollers, all the hinges, and then um, maybe even replace the bottom panel because okay. some of the panels are rusted at the bottom where they touch where they meet the ground. Okay. Um, and he's it's he has the money in the budget, but it's over a thousand dollars. And is it possible to make a motion like not to exceed twenty seven hundred dollars so he can move forward in the next two weeks, or do you want him to come back with um, an actual amount at the next meeting? One of the wishes for the Lord. We'll make a motion to authorize Tom and or Jason to spend up to three thousand dollars to accomplish the needs. Money bags. I'll second the gold plated door. All right. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion on that? Uh, the only thing that you should be aware of is that doesn't replace the motors, and those are 20, 20 plus years old. And when those go, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't want to do it yet, but when they go, it'll be fourteen hundred dollars, and so that'll be like a quick decision needed um, to fix that problem. But there's per a, motor, or yeah, per door, yeah. So, he, um, oh, and he, the, I mean, the technician who was there said there would be an indication that it's going to fail before it fails, and so at that time, but just know that it's not now, but it's probably coming soon. Just the time. So the motor's going to scream out, I'm not ready to fail? That's what they do, I guess. That's <laughs> two weeks. Yes. There's a light that says two weeks. Um. Okay, thank you for that information. Uh, we have a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed? If they have 300 bucks a day, I eat. Maybe. And the eyes have it. The seals are a great idea, right? Click <laughs> ROI. Right. The second item is hybrid meeting hardware and software. Oh, um, well, I think it depends on what it needs. But I think um, we, at this meeting, let's, let's be honest, when you're on Zoom, it's really difficult to join in, right? And if we move to the municipal office, it's also di might be difficult to join in. And it's there's legislation on the floor right now to make hybrid meetings mandatory. Um, we already have a projector, and we already have a big whiteboard, so we could use it at the municipal office. We're just missing, um, like, the camera technology to include um, those in the in the meeting and to be included in the same manner as those who are on Zoom. Um, and so, this Owl technology, um, they have it at LCPC. We use it in Peachum. It's 
pretty slick. It's expensive, but it makes hybrid meetings really efficient and smooth. Um, and this doesn't have to be a motion to buy it today, but just needs should we should be planning for this if it's going to be coming into law. And um, just what are your thoughts? How much is expensive? Looks like it's about thirteen hundred dollars. That's just for the owl, or that's, is that the screen too? That's just the owl. We already have a projector and screen is as about two hundred dollars, nine about ninety nine dollars each. Um, but we already have those. This is just the owl, and then we would project onto um, the whiteboard the in the full office. Down screen on the wall there. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I th Do you want to get further input or? I I looked at what he has. I think. I think we should move forward with it. This is if, you, if but it doesn't sound like you're ready for a motion on it, or are you? I'm ready to go. I mean, it'd be great to try it because we're gonna we're running out of our time here too, right? Like our time in the in the college. Let's get it and get it set up. And it'd be nice to get it get it going, and then after make town meeting, we can. I'll make a motion. That, do you want a number up to? Yeah, yeah, thirteen hundred. I think. Your number's right there. Yeah, I saw that, but I just wanted to make sure there would. You know, he could be hiring Shane to do tech work or something. I would suggest fifteen hundred just to include any additional circles we might need to get. All right, he might need some cables. There, there's going to be some stuff so, included that I saw in the package you sent, but we don't know. Yeah. I'll move that we um, authorize Thomas to spend up to fifteen hundred dollars for the purchase of the owl. Could you amend that to make it Rosemary since she has a credit card? Rosemary. <laughs> Buy one two three years ago. <laughs> so Rosemary right said no. She wanted to do it three years ago. So my Mark's motion is to authorize Rosemary to spend up to fifteen hundred dollars on the owl. Yep. There's a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? I was just going to ask um, whether you had, you know, talked to uh, folks like. GMA TV about whether this could be integrated into their system. Um, yeah. But, I mean, obviously, you know, you now it doesn't need to be the time, but. Um, oh, that's a good point. <laughs> you know, Tim and I had a conversation over email briefly about when we use right. Zoom to record. It's Tim. So um, if we were to produce, an, like, if we used an owl and you guys had, like, the Zoom recording. You would just need our Zoom password and then post that onto YouTube, and that's what the public would see. How would how would how do you typically how would you then post on uh, our videos? Okay, uh, so uh, Morristown actually has recently uh, switched to using an owl for theirs, and um, it's as long as there is a computer there to run the owl itself, uh, it's a very easy integration. We would just be able to hop into the Zoom, record that, and do the stream. Um, uh, Recording in progress. Basically, the same way that um, we have been doing, except for we would just be using that as the camera right. instead of like a regular webcam. And so you could actually Recording do, do this from do this remotely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that's that would, the way they did it before. So that would be huge. That would make your life and so much easier. Yeah. We can we can also it also we can also still uh, provide uh, audio uh, equipment uh, for you all to use because that uh, does still interface really well with the owl. Um, right. We were afraid at first that it wouldn't, but testing it at Horseville, it works perfectly. This is great news. Okay, do it. Cool. Oh, this is motion in a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Is Beth voting? Sounds like the ayes have it. Uh, wait, she's on mute right now. That's but the three of you voting aye doesn't I'm matter. I'm having Beth. audio issues. Sorry. Um, Hey, we can hear you without feedback. Beth, you're on there twice. I could not hear you before, which is why I left you there. Oh, gotcha. Okay, item number six is updated financials. It's down third trip, third contenders report. What do you have for us, Rosemary? I can use the latest uh, budget status report. And on the revenue, you notice, you notice I put the uh, upper money in. Other revenue transfer from ARPA. So five hundred and first page. Five hundred and eighty-five thousand and two hundred and twelve dollars. Okay. Nice. Do we need a? Do we need a, a new? Code or line item for that, or mm, 
No, just to bring it in. Should That's what I did. You created a new account. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, 30. That's oh, okay. something with high okay. yield. Okay. Right. Beautiful. Overall, the budget is spent at 50.34%. <coughs> Rosemary, that we shot yet till mud season happens. It's all about mud, hey? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Seems like it's already happened on some of those roads. Yes. Three times? Yeah. <laughs> okay. right. And under licenses, I have a um, cannabis license for Stephen Dodge, and he is here to explain it to you. Awful lot at the last minute, but um, is there anything you'd like to speak to, Stephen? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. This is this is application with the CCP has been going on for about five months, roughly. I literally just found out about this particular component a couple of weeks ago, which is why I made the request. So thank you, first of all, for allowing me to allow me here. Um, small operation, tier two manufacturing, custom pre rolls done out of my house, two seventy six Lower Main, owner operator, sole employee. Um, there's so many variables, like I can't, just because of the status of the license, I've not been able to determine volume estimates yet because I can't technically have conversations with cultivators about those pieces. So I'm literally trying to put, I'm trying to roll everything up, use my fun. Um, so, That's I'm, good. so where I'm at from the CCP's perspective is that they asked me to say, well, what does your select board mean? And I'm like, I don't know. So when I talked to Rosemary, Rosemary, she's like, what does the CCP mean? And they're like, they need what you're telling me. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of, I'm flying blind a little bit. Yeah. I think we all are. I'm sure. I went to that training and it, it was it was informational, but there was no direction. Exactly. I don't you probably went to the same webinar. I was, yeah, yes. it was a, little, a little frustrating. So I'm just trying to work the pieces out. And so I'm not sure what specifically I need from you guys. I think it's a motion. It says, the, there's a sentence right at the bottom. It's like the second, they hit it in there. It says they need a, an approval from... Yeah, it's a that's a tricky one. So the select so what, what I'm seeing for specifically from the CCB is approval of inspections. I'm not sure if that comes from them, but I do know that they have regional inspectors. I'm so so not sure if that falls to your purview. Uh no, the town doesn't do inspections or anything, and to my knowledge, unless something has changed, we're not even allowed to deny license applications. Yeah, we don't have a so oh, what's that language again for the commission? The Cannabis Control Commission? We did, yeah. Well, well, okay. Cannabis Control so Commission. Our Lord yeah. is the selected yeah. work we offer. Yeah. Be, so I think it, when there was an article. It looks like they just, in order for the state to approve it, the, you guys would have to approve this license. It's, it's, it's essentially a rubber stamp, but, you know. Yeah, we have no Every time about. we've had one of these come up, we've said, it's like, there's no... So nothing we can, nothing we can, we can say even, no to. We can't even put stipulations on. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, we, I would make a motion yeah. to approve the cannabis license for, I love this, joint ventures. Yeah, it's a two joint ventures. Um, the tier two cultivation. Manufacturing, not cultivation. Manufacturing license. Yeah. I'll second that. Wait, sorry, I cut you off in your motion. Well, I mean, that's it. That's it. You, you finished the motion for me. Well, we're one person. No. A joint motion. I was, just, I was just joking. All right, there's a motion on the floor, and Marcus seconded it. Any further discussion? Uh, I would just ask um, have you thought at all about security? Um, it's all set to go. I, I've got a uh, camera, I've got two cameras, opposing walls, windows are taped. Padlock door with a um, with a lock. Um, based on the based on the language I got from the CCB, it means their code, although they've not yet inspected yet. Okay. Um, I fire marshal signed off early on the application, so literally everything is done as far as I know. Although it could change tomorrow, who knows? But 
at this point, um, it's secure. I mean, it's, it's internal, so there's an external wall mm -hmm. with an external door, but the entrance to my operation will be through my kitchen, through my house. So there's multiple, multiple locks, and the windows are secure as well. Security tape and two cameras. And you live there? I do. Thank you. Sure. Any further discussion? Without any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I have. Is there anything Thank specific you. that I need from you guys? Uh, Rosemary? Is this an online? No, it's not. All I need is an email. So Rosemary will email them as the clerk, right? Okay. You're responsible. Oh. Like, does it, is it kind of like the licenses? No, it's not. Well, Rosemary and I actually had a conversation about this. Um, so she gets all the liquor and tobacco licenses, but I get all the CCB stuff. Do you want her to have the CCB or do you want to keep it the way it is? Doesn't matter, there's no wrong answer. What's the board's pleasure on that one? We already want to approve it, so. Thank you. Who wants it? I think it makes sense to treat it like licenses. I liked it under Rosemary because all of the so licenses are under the clerk, but. I feel the same, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, you okay with that, Rosemary? That's fine. All right, any other licenses? Like is there a second to well, I'll put to that the next meeting. Okay. Give them a chance to come here. Got it, got it. Come. We got one this morning. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. We got um, another cannabis one this morning? Yeah. For, For the next meeting. meeting. The um, store? Anything else? Or? Or no. The no. The no. Or? French Hill Road. Right. Our next bullet without an item is for Randall's off on CEDS, um, and he has expressed that he will be doing a report for us in the next meeting. So we can move on from that unless there's something pertinent. I think you have to have an email if everybody's He did send an email, I read his email. I'm sorry, I asked one question. Is there like, will there be a follow up? Should I just work with you, Rosemary, or yep. they'll, you'll notify them and they'll, they'll notify me? Yep. Thank you all again very, very much. Much appreciated. Oh, Thank you. Have a good night. You too. All right, item number seven is the municipal building and library repair contract. Uh, we were hoping to have stuff tied up by now, but um, we're still waiting on FEMA to come back with a go-ahead. Um, they're, they're taking the bid response and they're kind of picking it apart and they want, want more detail out of it. And so the Del Tetro, Del Tetro Inc. is working um, with me and Ron to try to figure out exactly what FEMA is looking for. So they ask questions, we get answers. They ask more questions, we get answers. And so as soon as that process is done and FEMA says okay, then it moves forward to the town attorney to draft a contract. But at this point, we're just playing the information game. Um, you know, have you gotten any response on Division of Historic Preservation there? I haven't heard anything from SHPO yet, no. So um, Ron has that. Contact though he's been in contact with them. And the communication started. <coughs> and we have not <coughs> come to their uh, attention yet. Uh, You're not seeing any major holdups. We were told four to six weeks construction will start, and we're hoping uh, the contractor can still get going. But we're just hoping to finish this paperwork side up as fast as possible. As soon as FEMA says go. We can move ahead with the entire municipal building project, and then every and the number is waiting on the library, and then that waiting for a ship out to say go. So FEMA's close. It, it was the last guy, the last FEMA person we had. We would we would come to him with a question. We'd follow up with him in six weeks. We'd never hear anything. This the new person we have is awesome. He asks a question. And if I don't have an answer, or Ron doesn't have an answer in six hours. He's following up. To say what, what did you find out? So it's, things are moving much better right now. Great. Yeah. And you're not seeing any major red flags? Just, no, it's just basic. It is. Like, you know, an example, as I said, a resiliency at the library for 28000 What does that mean? Just break it down. And so it's injected concrete. It's, you know, floodgates and windows. So it's just like the specifics of these, like, larger groups of numbers. So hopefully we'll have that at our next meeting, right? That's be great. That would be really good. Yeah. All right, are we ready to move on? Or more questions for Tom on that topic? Next item is, I always want to say CIA. 
CAI is asking for contracts. I transposed those too. I was going to say CIA. Right. <laughs> There's the proposal, and I believe this is who we currently have for the past very close to uh, For a map, GIS maintenance service of $2,200. Um, that's the that, website. That's the website. There's an additional $20 per building added or charged. This is one item that we overspent on in the past, but we did increase our budgeted amount this year. Did we put two grand in this year? Um, we put 4200 $5,200. Oh, we budgeted $4,000 last year, and we spent $4,300, um, but we budgeted 5200 for this year. Yeah, I, called, I called CAI and said, what's the total package? And so that's updating tax maps. That's importing the grant list and updating the tax maps and mass grant list, scanning new flats that come in, and then the website off the mind. They, they would be scanning the plants, or would we have to scan and send it to them? Yeah. We have to scan and send it to them. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fancy. It's like a spaceship. Yeah. Uh, motion to approve. Um, you, 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 you want somebody to sign it, too? I think all of you have to sign it. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve the contract. I want to sign mine. Motion on the floor. Yeah. That said, only three people need to sign it. Right, Beth? Uh, yeah, second. there's four slots. We just need to them. Okay, so there's a motion and a second by Shane. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Sign away, Shane. Um, item number nine is town sponsored events for 2024. Can you do a little presentation on that, Tom? Uh, I met with Terry Ferrari um, for Johnson Works, and her request is that the town kind of got see an overview of the events that their Johnson Works is already scheduled and planning to do. And just to try to expedite the process to move it along, um, just try to get the approval for town sponsorship now, so that way they don't have to come back for each event. Um, but just say, okay, we we approved these X events as town sponsor. The town will support through mostly for the support of uh, insurance, and one of them is coming right up. It's the uh, Easter egg hunt, and there's two others. I don't have my packet in front of me, so I can't look at it. So I kick off. Uh, yeah, there's a summer 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 jubilee, summer kickoff festival, uh, uh, TBD, and TBD in the fall. So that TBD will still have to, to come back for at that time. So the trick basically is for us to describe them as town sponsored events and to correct by passive. That's right. Before before each event, I'll I'll reach out to passive and just let them know what's happening. Do we know what the additional cost is? There isn't any. Yeah. I would, What's the board's pleasure, I guess? I would move to approve the list as submitted by Johnson Works, which I don't have directly in front of me, um, as, uh, as town sponsor event. So the annual icon, the summer kickoff festival, uh, and the to be announced fall event, and the Johnson Jubilee. Second. Maybe Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mark. Maybe fall will be another one of those haunted house things that was such a big hit. Is yeah. fall? That's what it was. To be determined, or we know we're going to have a fall at the event. I'm assuming it's the event that's to be determined. The fall is going to come here. Gotcha. Yeah. We're ensuring that there's going to be no falls. <laughs> I would just um, recommend that we not do the fall until we know what it is, because it may be a different type of insurance coverage based on what the event is, if it's something like Haunted High. You know, it was a little bit different because we were in a building. The others are outside. I don't know. We don't know what it is yet. I would be more than willing to amend my original motion to 
exclude the fall to be announced event and have them come back once we know what the event is. Could be a drunken raft race. Could be. The motion has made an amendment. Is the seconder accept the amendment? It's a fair concern, yeah. Okay. I believe Kyle has a question. You might have to speak up so that I can hear you. Okay. Um, my question was around the Jubilee. So last year they didn't run it. Johnson Works didn't. Um, I stepped up and did that. I haven't talked to them about next year at all. Um, I'm glad to see that it sounds like they do want to take it on again. Um, but it was my understanding. I mean, I came and got the blessing of it, or I kind of told you that we were going to do it, but it was the village that actually I had to buy. I personally had to buy insurance for the village green. Um, to make that event happen. So I don't know if that's, I don't remember that having to go on your insurance or asking for insurance. That is a very good point. I think what maybe you're trying to get at is we can only approve events and insurance on our properties. Is that, and the recommendation is for carry the same request from the village if they're going to use village properties. Is that, I yeah, I guess that. I'm saying that the, the Jubilee is really um, only on village property and private business property. It doesn't really have anything to do with the, the town person. Well, the Historical Society building is used, which is a town. town yeah, some, some town property does get you know, used, but it is mostly centered on the village green. Um, and I, I think I agree with what you're saying, where that's, that's one where they probably want to get village insurance. You and Duncan would have to agree on an amendment, or or if we're just going to vote and recommend that she goes and sees the village, that's fine. But well, I don't know if we need to do that. I think in the example of the haunted um, grocery store, whatever it was called, um, we still sponsored the event and we insured the event. So I think we could still insure the Jubilee event even if it's on village property. Um, but I think that asking the village to um, add on to their insurance wouldn't be a bad idea either. It is the same carrier. I, I agree with that, and I would, I would advocate to leave my original motion as is, which is to sponsor those events, not, okay. not on town property, but to sponsor the event. Yeah. Okay. So Duncan's original motion was to sponsor all of them, Donna, and he amended it to exclude the fall TBD. That was accepted by Shane. Right. That's the motion that's on the floor to sponsor the events. You're clear on that? Yeah. Is there any further discussion on the events? A lot of good points made, but I'm just making sure that we're... No. Make sure we'll clear. be merged by then anyways. Let's go. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? It looks like the ayes had it. Tom, if you could make a note to reach out to Gary with the recommendation that she seeks permission and sponsorship from the village as well on the events. Because it's a good point. Thank you for raising it up. Excellent. Text me right now. Uh, next item is our book, Community Challenge Grant Program for the Rail Trail Committee. I believe we have a couple of people in the audience. I'd like to speak to this, and if they could move up and put on a microphone so Beth could hear, I think that would be great. I could hear Kyle well. Okay. Can you point that one that way, Duncan? And just speak up, Doug. I think Kyle, the, 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 the mic here should be able to yeah. Oh, that was good? Yeah. yeah mic's everywhere. <laughs> okay, so um, I think there was a little description in the packet, in your packet, of what this grant is and what we're going for. Um, it's through ARP. It's a community challenge grant that we um, think is a good match. My apologies. Okay. The packet says ARPA, and I said ARPA. Is it through AARP? I know this is like very minimal change. I just want to make sure. It is AARP. I'm sorry. AARP. I'm sorry. I think I'll just write it around there. Sorry. For old people. Switch gears. It's AARP. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
some of our priorities, which is uh, getting rail trail user friendly amenities um, placed throughout the town and village. So that includes benches, bike racks, trash receptacles, picnic tables, um, and we're hoping to uh, fund those things through this grant. So we are looking for your blessing on that um, to have Randall kind of go forth with the application, which is due so March 2nd. And there's no town match, correct? There's no match. So the request from the Railroad Committee is to have Randall do this, correct. not the Railroad Committee, but. Correct. And there's no implied extra work for any other town employees, is it just Randall? Um, he will probably have to ask Rosemary for some financials. They like, like, you know, balance yeah. sheets and profit and loss statements, that kind of thing, but not expensive work. Okay. Probably think she already has it at her fingertips. Yeah, and then, I mean, I, I imagine there will be some labor involved if we were to get the grant installing benches and mic racks and so, all of those. Are we installing all of those? So we're going to the village um, to ask them also for their blessing on this grant because um, some of the these things will be on either their property or jointly owned property and to also ask them for in-kind labor support for um, for doing the, taking old things away and installing new things. Gotcha. Um, How much is the grant total? I think we can ask for up to fifty thousand dollars, mm. and we're probably going to go for most of that because you'd be shocked at how much a new bench and bike rack costs. <laughs> so, Kyle, will some of these things be um, replacing amenities that are currently part of the Main Street? Correct. The original Main Correct. Street project. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and that is part of the deal with that Main Street part. The MOU with the village is that it's supposed to be, these things are supposed to be maintained and um, replaced. Um, and it's been yeah, about so 12 this, years. Would, this would sort of flow along with that. Totally. <clears throat> okay. Are there any further questions from the Lord? Would there be additional locations other than just Main Street? So, part of our, what we have a little subcommittee um, off the rail trail committee because the grant is due soon and we're trying to gather as much information as possible. So what we've been tasked for, what we've tasked ourselves to do, is to do a lot of outreach and public awareness around the rail trail and what we're trying to do so that businesses and organizations feel, um, well, first of all, we think that they have really pertinent information for us. They're the boots on the ground that knows what cyclists want you know, when they come to their business or organization. So we've been, um, I don't know, maybe 12, a dozen or so different businesses and organizations we've been personally reaching out to saying, what do you already have for infrastructure? <clears throat> what do you need and want? And what, do you, what are additional offerings that you think um, could be good for people coming off the rail trail? So we have a big spreadsheet <coughs> and all that information. And in the next week or so, we'll have it all compiled, and then we're gonna start to really pinpoint um, all the places. But we've we've got a working map that we're working with. But yeah, there'll be like for example, um, uh, we think that the Woolen Mill, now that it's a real kind of tourist destination again, is a good spot for a, a bike rack, for example. Um, so that would be a new new. Infrastructure. We've talked to Sue Levering at the Arboretum. She would like um, a picnic table, so that would be a new initiative. Um, those are just a couple of, of examples. The majority of it will be replacing stuff that's already there that just needs to be replaced and um, brought, you know, just uh, made more. <coughs> we're hoping to do brighter colors and just make things more obvious. Um, but uh, there'll be a few spots that will get brand new things. I'd like to put in a plug for right by the river on Railroad Street, but that's that's my preferred spot for one. Okay, good to know. You mean for a bench? A bench and a trash barrel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming down that hill. And... Is there anything being proposed for the trail itself for bench locations or scenic vistas or anything? We're, um, yes, we're actually going to. The rep committee is on our on our list to see um, what might be additional needs for the the trailhead. 
know that they already have some things, but there might be some things that could they could still use or need updating. So potentially there, but not so much on the rail trail because that opens up a whole other can of worms with working with. Interesting. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah. And the whole idea is to get people off the trail and down to our village. So what do you need from us? Just, Just the most authorized grant to work on it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So moved. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? You have it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for finding this grant. Right. Yeah. It's very exciting. Go for all of it. Doug has a question. What is it, Doug? Well, I want to say that I think you will see us again with regard to signage. Uh, also for uh, different, different, uh, different grants uh, because you know, we're trying to do what's coming up quickly and handle that and we'll be, we'll be back on other things that, that, that we will, uh, will help us economically in this community. Mm -hmm. and that's good news. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you awesome. all for your good work on this. Important stuff. I think we covered your topic already. I'm sorry I came <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't expect I to be I always presented it so good, so quick. I'm sure she did. <coughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, are we all set on that item? Yes. I think so. The next item is the uh, open house maintenance. Uh, did Mary Jean want to come into a presentation on that? Or no, I think it's just more of a bureaucratic clarification. <coughs> um, I, I got some more information later this afternoon. and. So it sounds like the original motion was for X number of dollars. They had trouble finding contractors. And when the contractor came and visited, um, the recommendation was to actually do different work. So the scope of work changed and the dollar amount changed. Um, and so, the, and actually the, the deposit, the first check is already wrote, Rosemary already wrote to the contractor. Um, it is work that all needs to get done. The house is, um, but it's just to approve the new dollar amount versus the old dollar amount and, and the change in scope of work. Which I tried to include. And the change in cost was what? $5,500 to $14,000? Correct. And the check's already been written. The first, is that the first one has. First deposit. Yeah. And it, was it less than $5,500? I guess, I, I mean, I know this was a tricky one because we had to split up their request because my father-in-law was one of the contractors, so I had to abstain from bullying on that. I believe Beth's mother was another one of the contractors and she had to abstain there. What was the motion that was made? Was it specific <coughs> contracts and dollar amounts or what? Um. Let's see if I can find it. I, the minutes. I, I think I sent that to you guys. It's great. You're an asset. Can't even remember when it was, Mark. It was like Octoberish, Septemberish. I remember once you brought it up, you and Beth abstained, but I don't remember. The I don't think I was at the meeting. I don't remember the actual. I know numbers. it was. It was similar to repaint the upstairs. Um, there was some electrical work that needed to be done for a fire exit. I believe that was through 802 electric. I thought there was Not some local electric. Electric work. work. And that wasn't part of this. This was this was all fixing up the second the second story so they could move artifacts up there. And they were going to redo the floors and paint. There was some electrical work. What was the fourth thing? It was four things. I don't think I was at that meeting. There was some discussion about the stairway, too. Oh. Mm, let me see. I, what's the board's pleasure, first of all? I mean, let's move forward with it. The dollar amount is increasing quite a bit. It just sounds like. The work's already happening without our rules. Okay, 
Yeah, yeah. so what's interesting is um, it's 14,000, but the difference is um, 7,000 is going to come is, is within budget. The, the Holcomb House has a $7,000 maintenance line item. And then, so they're asking the board to approve $7,000 of that line item of, of, temp, of budgeted money, whereas the initial motion in the fall was additional. It was like a separate motion to do this work. It looked like. And then the Historical Society is going to use their own funds to pay the additional 7000 So it's really only increasing by about 1500 from the first amount to the second amount of, of taxpayer money. Does that $1,500 still fit in the 5% projected spending cuts for this year? Uh, it does not. So that is going against what a previous meeting is for the shooting for. Uh, so the seven thousand dollars that's in the current year budget as as budgeted expense for maintenance. 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 Yeah. And, and, and they haven't spent any of that. It's like yet. they've spent like maybe one hundred and thirty nine dollars. Yeah. I mean, it would be a year. Right. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> I really hate the search feature in Outlook. Yeah, I, I really dislike Outlook. So my question is, if they spent the full seven, would they still be within budget for the current year? Because essentially that we're estimating, what, what, yeah, that's a good budget question. Did we estimate that they were going to uh, spend their entire we did. That's what we did. Because in our year-end projections, we left it as a budgeted amount. We we asked people to to be at five percent, but the reality is, what we put in the column was a hundred percent. Yeah. And we're in agreement that there still will be a cash flow issue at some point, right? I I mean I think I think there will be depending. It really depends on when industrial park spending starts. And when the stormwater project spending starts, and when, and whether it's fiscal year <clears throat> 24 or 25. Well, he's actually started or due to start like right away, isn't it? Who's this? The, this the, the historical society work? I think he wants to start this next week. So he's probably going to be well finished before. And, the, and to be clear, the first check was not taxpayer money, it was, it was money that from the historical society's own account that they received from donations and their own revenue sources. So it came from Inc? No, it came from, uh, they have like, a, I think they call it a checkbook, but it's it's like the fund, which where their donation donated funds get put into. Oh, it's to the reserve fund, right? Yeah. yeah. Did it come out of the reserve fund? Well, they don't have control of the reserve fund. It's the select board. Oh, Rosemary wrote the check. I know, but authorization for any reserve fund that reserve fund was not specifically set up to grant the historical society the authorization to spend money. That's an obligation of the town. So they should be, if they're taking money out of the reserve fund, they should be coming to the select board and asking for approval to spend $7,000 at the reserve fund. I agree with you. Um, I, I don't know exactly how the article's written, but I, You've never been wrong before on that. It doesn't matter how articles written, all reserve funds require select board approval, <clears throat> regardless of how the article's written. I mean, what's the total amount here? Total amount to be spent is um, 13,000 or uh, 14,000. Correct me if I'm wrong, but our procurement policy requires sealed at over 10,000. My way off on that. You're right. Sounds right. I don't remember, but you're probably right. So let's go through the procurement policy and talk about it then, I guess. Answer the question on what's left for Holcomb House maintenance. They spent eight hundred dollars, seven hundred eighty-five dollars ninety-one cents of the seven thousand. So that would leave six thousand three hundred fifteen dollars and nine cents. 
through the event of war. But they would be different contracts. You can't, I don't think we should be talking about them in terms of the total. It's not the way it was, that was not the way it was awarded. No, uh, um, what? what? Um, I was just talking about there's. I'm just saying we're don't, we don't fall into a sealed bid situation here. And yeah. they had like three or four different types of work they were looking for through different contracting. So each of those falls into under 10,000. I understand what you're saying and I agree, but I don't believe that this work is being performed by multiple different contractors anymore. It's being performed by one at one job. In three phases. Three phases of payment. So like before there was a contract for electrical, there was a contract for flooring, there was, you know, there was a, a quoted price from my father-in-law for flooring. I was paying for flooring on that, he did the same for your mother, and then we both quoted on the electrical, there's a direct quote. Now it's just $13,000 to one entity, correct? But that's not the way it was. I understand what you're saying. I don't understand how it would end up in one contract. That's why I we're revisiting it. Like, so the motion that was made is not the action that took place. And so now we have to resolve the issue. The 6,000 I was talking about was just what was left in their budget that, for that item. Yeah, the money's different than the contract. So how do we, how do we resolve it? What do we need? I mean, I think at this point, our, there, there are a few options. One, we can try to go through the seal bid process and just do a seven day seal. I can throw together an RFP based on these, this email, put it out and try to get a seven day response for next Monday. We can tell them you can only work up to $4,600 is what the check was already written for. Um, one fundamental issue is I, I see there should be, it, it would be nice if financials were reviewed. So the check went, you know, Mary Jean went and asked Rosemary to write the check. And Rosemary did because it, it sounded like it was already approved because of the fall motion. There was a breakdown in that miscommunication. That's not Rosemary's fault. It's not Mary Jean's fault. It's just, you know, the board said the historical society could do this work and spend this money. The scope of work changed based on the lack of contractors and the one contractor they had found other things. So Rosemary then got a request to write the check. It was, in her, under her impression, it was already approved in the fall, in that motion in the fall. Mm -hmm. So there, there was a crossover. And it, and so now we have to deal with it. And so, so what do you need from us? I think, I think you need to make a decision to whether you want to put out an RFP or whether you just want to approve it and just lesson learn, don't let it happen again. It's like there was no out, there was no malicious intent. I fall in that direction. If we put out an RFP, we're going to get the same one person again. Absolutely. Wait, we're not, just, nothing's going to happen. We might not even get that person. We might not even get that person. I mean, so let's just. Can I ask a fundamental question? What amount of work changed to almost triple the price of the work they were requesting? It's different work is being done. Do you see a copy of the contract? Uh, where did you get this? Yeah, where did, where did, did you get that? Where did you get that? I didn't even get that. <laughs> I just don't know what I asked. It's an all honesty. <laughs> this is too much for me to read and comprehend quickly. Yeah. So yeah. I, but, but I don't see floor standing on here. Uh, what do you want to do then? I I think we should retroactively approve the historical society's use of the reserve funds to apply to this contract um, and they can use they've got what you say 6300 bucks basically in their current year budget that's $6,314.09. Am I right about that? Yes, yeah, so just so. told you not to exceed 7000 of budgeted funds and the rest to come out of the reserve. 
or not to exceed 63 and then the rest of the Yeah. I don't. Um, I can scan it and send it. Yeah, I'll send it to everybody so they don't have a copy either. Is there a reason that we don't need to go through a bid process? I mean, if I remember correctly, we had people that had submitted bids for the individual pieces of the project. We voted on bids. I get that there was a breakdown, but why don't we need to go through a bid process again? It wasn't really a bid process before, I don't think. They were just asking. It was just a discourse. Yeah, you're right. It was sort of informal. I was not at the meeting, but I, I think that the estimates were, um, you know, good neighbor type estimates. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like I have to find it. Minutes? Yeah. Oh, is this just ringing a bell? I just missed. Couldn't tell you what the motion was. I'd have to look it up just like you would. <laughs> You're probably faster than that. I think it'd be probably important to know what the actual motion was. Yeah. I mean, if you simply authorize them to do a scope of work, um, that's one thing. If you, if you assign a specific not to exceed figure on it, then it's probably another thing. Well, it doesn't sound like we can take action in this meeting, so let's Well, we, we, are. we might be able to if we know exactly what we did. Well, part of the problem for this. Let's come is back to it. I'll look, at, I'll look to see if I can find a motion. Well, that would yeah. be cool. So thank you very much, Beth. So we're going to table 11 and come back if everybody's comfortable with that. Yep. Um, item number 12 is the fire contract agreement for services. Um, the Johnston Village, I believe everybody's seen the fire contract. Um, is proposing a 3.5% increase. I in the back your packet is loose. For, uh, for a total of, you need it, for a total of $101,338. Uh, so the amount of increase is $3,426. What are the board's wishes? So we put that number in our budget, right? I was going to verify that. I, I believe so. Because um, we got it like literally right before the meeting. Yeah, I remember. Um, oh, I'm for you. I sure that so I, I had one question about the contract. And that is, you know, when we have these events, like a flood event or a, an emergency management event, and the fire department comes back to us and says, um, you know, we're not, we want to be reimbursed for anything that is not within their wheelhouse, basically. Like, like the, you know, the night in December, they said, if we're going to go out and do the house to house, we're going to charge you for it, we're building for it. Um, I wonder if there's, some way to deal with that in, in this contract. If I read the if I read the contract, I would have said it's a little confusing to me, but I would have said that that kind of response to an emergency would be covered under the contract, as opposed to be secondary and billable under the contract. I get it because of I understand what you're saying because it's pre, it's work before an impending emergency. I guess that's how I'm seeing it. And I think the proactive work uh, may save labor in some instances, may not. It might come out as a wash. I hear what you're saying. I'm not sure. Do you have a recommendation for approval? Well, I guess my recommendation would be that we talk. I'm okay with approving the contract and the money because we've got it in the budget, but I think maybe this is an item that we need to visit, revisit with the village and the fire department to see if there's some way that we can come to some better agreement on what's covered and what's not covered. Yeah, I would, I would agree. So is, yeah. Not putting words in anybody's mouth here. Is your recommendation to approve the contract and to add it 
to a list of items for a joint meeting where we could talk to the trustees, because I think at the root of it, we both care about serving the community. And I think there's just a little pickup or a little bump that would probably work out for next year's contract. That's, is that what you're that's more or less what I'm suggesting is that we approve this contract, but put it as a, an agenda item for discussion of how can we deal with that issue? Because uh, it honestly, it bothered me a little bit to think that we were going to be billed for things that I considered an emergency response. I was surprised more in July. Both times were pretty surprising, yeah. But yeah, that's a good point, Yuri. Um, can you add that to the list for? What language would you like? To, uh, uh, just discussing uh, a pro proactive flooding event. Fire coverage for next year's contract, maybe. Is that a good way to word it? Um, it's just a conversation. Yeah, you know, a fire service contract. Yeah. Clarification. Yeah. Of, I would say clarification of, yeah. Limit it just to twice. Well, I, I mean, really what it is, is there's there's one part of the first provision in here that explicitly says emergency calls are this and they are not any of the, you know, pre-planned public outreach, traffic control, any of those other things, all of which, as I've been said, probably could save labor, possibly could save lives in some emergencies. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're told that that's not included in the contract. So. Yeah, and is it, it's a question of pre-planned. If, if we're in an emergency and people are in danger of losing life and property, is that a pre-planned event? Right. I mean, I, you know, I, I understand, I get the part about having them go out and provide notice, um, but I, you know, I think we're at that point, we're in an emergency. Yeah. So even if we, you know, even if we have to negotiate a difference in cost, I'd like to figure out some way where they're not coming back to us and saying, oh, we're going to bill you for it. Gotcha. So are they, they're volunteer? Yeah. Yeah. So when they provide emergency services, what are they billing for? They're billing the village. If they're out working, they're billing minimum wage plus a dollar an hour. Is that still what it is, or is it minimum wage? It takes a little bit more than minimum wage. A little more than minimum wage. So they're they are actually, if they're out there doing that stuff, they're billing the village for their time as a fire department. So what they're saying is, we want you to pay that portion. that portion of that cost. I guess what I'm saying is... They need to budget better. Yeah. Huh? They just need to budget better and try well, to yeah. appropriate amount. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and that, like you're saying, if it's a price <coughs> increase where they incorporate some amount, you know, that, that will hopefully pay for the labor during those times that yeah. are hopefully rare. Because know? we're a contract. You know, right. the, the difference between us and the village is the village owns and operates the fire department as an entity. Yeah. We're a contract, and we're, we're paying a service, and I think we should get a better definition of what we're paying for under that service. Yeah. And whether that means, you know, there's an additional cost associated with that, uh, you know, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just throwing out there that I... It well, bothered me when I heard that it's one of those places we're going to where, here and do this, but we're going to bill you for it. That's a nice way to come together and avoid surprises, right? <clears throat> and just having a discussion to avoid surprises is always best for everybody. I, that makes sense. Sure, sure. So, what are the board's wishes with this contract? I think Doug can hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I think that you're going to need to make the most. I would move to approve the draft contract. Like I agree. And authorize um, uh, either the chair or the vice chair to sign on behalf of the board. Second. No second. Motion is seconding for the discussion. I wasn't trying to cut you off. I, I agree. And you have that down on the list. Um, yeah, it's on the whole business list. Oh, beauty. Uh, hearing no further comments, all those in favor signify the 509. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye.
And the ayes have it. Uh, I already start coming back to item number 11. Actually, um, you guys are only here for EHP, right? Correct. Are you ready to go? Or do you need five more minutes? Correct. Okay. You're up. All right. Item number 13, Scrivener Bridge. Sure. Study and presentation from EHP. EHP will be presenting their work on scope and study and Bridge. Yep. Do we need to get uh, some lights? Can you come into the office so, and do it? We don't have the uh, presenter working right now, so we're hoping to have some visuals. It would just be words today. I can turn my my laptop to the select board so you can see some things, but... Only if we're putting that in the center. The dog and pony show is not functional? Uh, it, working oh right my God. I didn't test it ahead of time. I'm so personal. disappointed. Tim, do you by any chance have an extra HDMI cable in there? Yeah, if you have an HDMI cable. Game. No, no, I do not. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. You probably left that off, right? You know, I can just go start pulling doors open. But, yeah. We will be back with more presentations with more details, too. So, okay. Where are we um, at? We are just up the road here at 100C. Um, no, we're at the college. Do you okay. know where it is? Yeah. yeah where are we at? So, um, this is just a. Uh, Seems like a re-scoping of a previously existing scoping study. It's a scoping study. So, it's, a scoping study. it's a scoping study of a scoping study. Um, right now, we don't have much design. We have had a kickoff meeting with the uh, Lamoille County Planning Commission, as well as you. It was it the select board? Or was the town of Johnson? I was there. You were there. The bridge. Yep. So we have some basic alternatives, and we're here to get some input from anybody. This is a concerns meeting, really. Um, it's not the end of the slideshow, that's fine. I can, I'm sure you're all kind of familiar with the area, but basically the purpose and need of, of the situation is, our purpose is to identify an economical solution to preserve the Scrivener covered bridge and improve flood resiliency to prevent further storm damage to the bridge, as well as the banks of the channel and the, the roads nearby it. Um, the need for this is preservation of a historic structure. Um, there's been documented flooding over the roadway, damage to the roadway, and with more flooding could be potentially to the structure as well. Um, the idea being to reduce maintenance requirements after any flood um, and keep the bridge intact. So I'll just go over the draft recommended alternatives that were suggested. Uh, we, of course, have do nothing. Um, one solution, I'll go kind of from lowest cost to highest cost, is to have a more resilient roadway. That is, armor the channel, um, make the roadway more resilient, could even mean paving. And uh, a second, I guess it would be a third alternative, is add a high flow relief culvert to the, if you're looking downstream of the channel, to the right side. So that's the side of the road that's lower. When you're going over the bridge, it's on, there's a lower side and a higher side. Lower side gets washed out. That side could have a small, wouldn't really be able to be that small. It'd be sizable uh, relief culvert. So any high flow can go through there. And then I guess the largest alternative is basically that, but instead of adding a culvert in that area, turn one of the abutments of the bridge into a pier add another bridge on the other side, basically making it a two-span bridge with a pier in the center to try to accommodate the river. Um, so just where we are in... So widening the lengthening the total span of the bridge? Correct. Not, not um, lengthening the existing bridge, because um, the covered bridge itself is sitting on steel beams. The covered portion is... It's structural for the sake of holding up the roof and the rest of the structure, but the beams and the abutments are its own situation. So it would be, that case I believe wouldn't be adding a covered bridge, it would be adding maybe a steel beam with a wooden deck. Yeah, right? it would just add like a second span, essentially. I mean, I guess it would probably all still be considered the same bridge, but it would be completely independent of the existing one. It would just sit on the one, of, it would share a foundation. Can you speak up? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a request. We have a select board member, remote. If you're wondering if you could, we can move the mic closer too. 
if you want. Whatever. Sure, yeah. I, can't hear yeah. I can hear just fine. Uh, there's literally no problem with sound. Why are you asking what bridge you're talking about? <laughs> I, I was not asking what bridge you're talking about. Come on. <clears throat> yeah, no, so one of the options would be to add a second span. Because um, one of the biggest issues with the site is that the bridge is only about 35, 36 feet. The span is about 35 feet. Right. Bankful width of the river is closer to 67, 68 feet. So it's quite a pinch point. So, and that water needs somewhere to go. Ideally, you would either lengthen the structure, like put in a completely new bridge, or you could add in a second, a second span to open that up. That's obviously going to be a much more expensive alternative than, you know, armoring the roadway. But if you did something like that, you would open a channel behind the current abutment, which would become a island up here. Yep. Okay. And which way would you expand it? To the north. Towards like Hunter. The Rockies. Into the intersection. Yeah. Beautiful. Continue. That's the low. I know it's the low side. It just it would require moving roadways likely. Yeah, and that side is also in in, a, in the floodway too, so there's, you know, we can't really raise, we can't raise anything up, we can't, you know, you can't impact the base flood elevation, we can't do any of that. So like, adding a span, putting in a, in a, a different bridge, a longer span would, would essentially create like what they call a net effect. So you're, yes, you're putting something in the floodway, but you're gonna, <coughs> the net effect is that you're not raising the base flood elevation, so. That's another consideration too. So to be clear, are these recommendations that you're making tonight based on your review of the original scoping study or? So these are based, we've, you know, been on site, we've reviewed the original scoping study, we've had the kickoff meeting, and these are potential alternatives that we can look at further and put in an actual report and then come to, you know, and evaluate them further and come to a conclusion as to like, this is our recommended alternative. Um, I guess what we're looking for here right now would be, are there any concerns you have with the site, with the project ex itself? Are there anything, is there anything you want us to consider as we evaluate these alternatives? Are there any other alternatives you may want us to look at? Um, we're we're kind of just in the information gathering stage right now. Well, I would have one. Okay. I'm curious, did you come up with any other ideas other than the scoping study? You went on site, you looked at the situation of the bridge and the river and the roadways. Is there any other alternatives than what we already know to be alternatives? There's the three, right? Which are known from 2010. I'm just wondering if there was there's one that got left out. In their discussion, yeah. but it was still in the previous scoping study. Right. They're asking about further digging into each of those items, right? To come to a conclusion on what the best is. We're yeah. open for other suggestions as well, but yeah. What's your other one, Duncan? Well, so in the original scoping study, there was one alternative, which was sort of armoring the road um, and allowing the floodwaters to go across the road, but not putting in a big, a big major culvert. Um, and that involved putting in tow walls and you know, some fairly extensive things. I'm curious as to why that doesn't seem to be a good um, alternative, in your opinion. That is, uh, the, that would be probably closest to the first after the do-nothing alternative that we did describe. Yeah, just, yeah, one of them was just like yeah. armoring the roadway and looking at potential ways to do that. Um, and we'll, you know, evaluate that further and, and provide that in the scoping study as well. Okay. The town yeah. partially kind of did that, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, There's it looks like there is some. Um, you see the washout area with stuff that's less likely to wash out underneath it. Right. Well, the reality of that site is that there's almost a natural. The bank overflows and goes around right. rather than taking the bridge out, which is ultimately a good thing. Um, so, 
you know, if you think about ways that we might be able to um, improve the natural situation. There's another alternative. Move the bridge. There you go. <clears throat> Full thrill. Yeah. It's the not the bridge. sole entrance to any location yet. True. Yeah. And that was one of the alternatives in that yeah, original right. scope yeah. study, too. You just like saying scope and study, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Are you suggesting so, moving the existing bridge to a different location? If you just try to right. take it out and not preserve the structure? Well, I'm not saying that's what you should be doing. I'm saying it was, it's a potential. Yep. Yeah, and that's it's certainly we're... something we can discuss in the report, think, too, yeah. and whatever the historic yeah. ramifications I, I of that would be. Yeah, you don't want to discuss it. next to the guy that would never let a cover bridge go anywhere. And I, I think it would be yeah. highly yeah. unpopular. Yeah. yeah. It would be stupid. Oh, also. It does have. In there are other towns that have taken those historic bridges and put them on a uh, little Cambridge. Yeah, we, we could put it on a Waterman Road. Be perfect. Uh, <laughs> but the fact of the is, is that it seems, if I'm getting from you folks, you would like a little direction from us tonight? Or no, we don't necessarily, we're not looking for direction. Oh, we're okay. just looking for, like, are there any specific concerns with the site? Oh. Are there... This is a requirement of the grant. Um, these type of grants sometimes require public input in the beginning, so that way it kind of guides the engineering towards away from those concerns if they're if possible, so to help direct the design. Yeah, and, so, and I guess we don't want to come up with like, oh, this is what we think is the preferred alternative, and then to hear get feedback. No, we hate this, or we like. Why didn't you consider X, Y, like all these other things that we might not be aware of at this stage, or something like that? We're doing this scoping study to hopefully get government taken to pay for it. Exactly. To fix. Um, I right? said, no, the I sky's the limit right now. Maybe. But, but this is not public. This is not public feedback. This is a government body feedback. Yeah, I was if going to get. If we're going to get public feedback, we should actually be talking to the residents. That live on those road on that road or the roads that come off it. Because um, I'm actually curious how often the bridge gets used for vehicles, and I know people walk it all the time. I hear about people walking it. Um, but to Evan's point, there are ways to easily get to any location if the bridge weren't there. So what if it, you know, what if it was a walking bridge? I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there, but like we're not the ones, I'm personally not the one who uses it. Um, I talk about it a lot, uh, but it, that's because it comes up here. So it seems like we should get feedback from people who use it. It seems like you have what you need to move forward with your different designs, right? We'll cut down on our ATV program. Yep. Um, and you had mentioned that you'll be coming back with more detail. Um, so we're going. Is that something that, like, could we do a public hearing with, you know, just kind of put it out to people and, and let them know there will be presentations on the options and that they can come and voice concerns they may have? Right now our schedule, drafted schedule, is to do that takeaway of whatever we get from this meeting, develop more specific alternatives. At that point we would probably have a budget tied to each of them and then bring that back I assume to hear, right? It could be, yeah, so we would have like an alternatives presentation meeting that could be, I guess, another meeting here, or it, it could be, I guess, I don't know, like, does the public, is the public allowed access to these meetings? Like, yeah, this, oh, is, yeah, this is a public meeting. Yeah. 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 And if we do that, we should, you know, advertise the press. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. typically, like, like, yeah, we want to advertise letter. 21 days ahead of time and... Okay. And then after that alternative meeting, we would have a certain amount of time to get any additional public feedback. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't talking about public concern. I was talking about public ideas. Because I can promise you the people who live on that road talk about what could be for sure every time that bridge floods or around the bridge floods. So I think it would be interesting to hear if anyone had an opinion on that. Um, not from a concern standpoint, from the design standpoint. So you're, you're saying before they go to the next step of kind of exploring deeper each of the ideas, we should seek more ideas? I'm just saying there's not a lot of people that live on those road, that road. Yeah, 
I, I agree. In that area. I'm so should we send them a letter asking if they have ideas about the design of Scribner Bridge? And if they respond, cool. And if they don't, fine. Uh, if they respond, then we could say, well, do you want to, would you be interested in attending a meeting? You know, it could be simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. And um, I'm just trying to understand, do you think like everybody in a certain area around the bridge or? Yeah, I mean, miles. everyone lives on Sinclair Road or the roads that connect to Sinclair. I, yeah, I would be supportive of something like that to get their input if they have any. Well, correct me if I'm wrong here. I'm wrong a lot. So <laughs> don't be bashful. This scoping study is not about a full rebuild of the bridge, but about flood mitigation, right? So we're looking for ideas specifically on flood mitigation, not on rebuilding the bridge. Specifically right. on the low yeah. side of the bridge. Yeah, right. and uh, the intent would be that all of these alternatives, like there are some, you know, minor repairs that the bridge itself might need. Those those kind of things would be included in whatever, you know, each of those, you know, resilient resiliency alternatives. I have an idea. Yeah. I don't know if this was really looked into heavily during the previous scoping study. The dam just upstream. Is there any way that maybe A and R and High Park Electric and everybody could work together to reduce the inertia of water? I understand there's a lot of water and flood, uh, but that bridge specifically is trouble during ice jams as well as pool wheel flooding, right? So there's like a pinch point. There's a pinch point for ice there, so if we could let water out differently. Yeah, yeah I, mean, be I mean, I think it's largely because the bridge is 35 feet wide and the channel wants to be close to 70. Um, Understood. Yeah. But you're asking for ideas, <laughs> throw one out there, yeah. throw it back, it's fine. One of the other original ideas was moving the road. I, you know, I didn't see how this was really going to solve a lot of the issues, but moving the road behind the barn, you know, so getting the road further away from, um, but it still leaves the question of, <clears throat> how you access the bridge and how you get across it. Right. And the nice thing about harboring and culverts is that... And the road was a larger concern when there was a resident out there that would be stranded. That is no longer the case. Right. If we... Yeah. Our highway group has resources to do the culverts and uh, armoring themselves. Which is, you know... I, yeah, if I remember correctly, though, the, the, the bypass culvert, if you will, was big. What was it, like a 12, 12 by 6 foot? It was large, yeah. It yeah. was huge. Um, and that, and, and therefore, extremely costly. Um, right. Is there it also had to be sort of, you know, not particularly high, but really wide, because there wasn't a lot of depth. It wasn't a lot of depth. Yeah, because there's a ledge there too. That's why I thought it was six foot tall, but maybe I'm wrong. Again, that happens a lot. But I think that I think that envisioned actually raising the road you could quite a bit point. to you know to get. And, you know, I mean, some of the concern here is of course about size of the culvert. Yeah. I never really looked at a hybrid model. What about like, well, three, four foot corrugated culverts or four or three foot? I know that the whole pool line's different, but if the height was a big issue, three foot, town could put them in. We don't need to go to the government. We could probably put all those in for less than we're paying for this open study. And it would prepare us for 75 stone floods. And then if it was, I don't know if you pour them all in concrete and the, wall, and the hydraulic pressure couldn't push them away, you could cover them with really expensive gravel for six inches every time, but it would be a one day repair, not a waiting for FEMA for 
six months. Right. I mean, there's certainly a difference between adding in a relief culvert that would get you whatever that capacity is that you need and adding in some that will just improve the condition. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about adding in something that would take care of 60, 70, 80 percent of the floods. Like, yeah. you know, the flood that we just saw in December, <clears throat> there was, uh, there was what, four inches of water at the deepest spot on that road. And granted, it was 20 feet wide. You probably know a lot better how many gallons that is. You know a lot better about the end of the culverts and different design of culverts for more water flow, but it's probably something we could do relatively cheap that would take care of the majority of them. Like I said, if you cast them on concrete, is that really going to go anywhere? It creates your spillway for the cheap surface. There we go. In case you didn't know, I come from a farming family, so. Yeah, no, this is all good stuff to know. I mean, we want to balance the concerns of the town, the, you know, I mean. It's about good. building the road up a lot, making the bridge harder. All right, are we good? Did you guys get what you needed? Yeah. I said we did. Mark's not interested in my ideas, and I was dunking, so. Shane wants me to move on. How do you put a goal in the town? to speak about the town. Yeah. Is, it, is there something you would like to mention? I didn't see you raise your hand, I'm sorry. Is there something you'd like to mention? I think it's all been, that horse has been beat pretty hard. <laughs> I, I think you armor it and let it go. You know, I really don't think, one, we're not going to buy the house, which is what the new bridge and other, a second bridge would entail. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. These guys have already decided that the culvert has to be six feet high, 30 feet wide. I don't know, no, no, no. The previous scoping that was I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I I saw that too. So it seems to me the logical thing is figure out how we're going to armor this because it's going to continue to flood and how to mitigate the amount of gravel we have to bring back in after each flood. That floor just got 10 feet wider, Mark. Good call. Thank you, Dan. But we're not going to buy the house, so. Yeah, part of the part of the issue though is all of that whatever washes out of the road washes into the road. So Fish and Wildlife and R has something to say about that load into the stream. So there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces. But, you know, some people it's been stay. washing into the stream for what 150 years. Continue to watch it. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying the reality of, you know, you, you hear the same thing about people who want to solve the flooding by dragging the rivers. <clears throat> Do you guys have any homework for us? Um, we'll need to set another meeting, but I can coordinate with, with Thomas separately. Um, you know, right now we were at <coughs> sometime in March, but we can. I can discuss that separately, so I don't need to take up any more of your, any more of your time. Beth, did you have anything else? Nope. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, was there any action item for us to try to contact people around there, or is that just a future board conversation? I think she said future board, but she said up to the board, I think. Oh, up to the board. Yep. If you're going to set up a public hearing, if that's, if that's something that needs to happen, then we should contact, we should make the effort to reach out to the people that live within probably a mile. Yeah, I mean, we can put together like a, a flyer or something, like for a local concerns meeting that would, that you could. You tell that guy, everybody in the town will show up. Got it. I'll get the petition right here. <laughs> yeah, the time should be made. I'm just not clear. I think that should be on the town side, not added to your guys' plate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you want to just advertise on uh, Facebook or how, I, I don't. When it works for you, when we get a date, we'll, we'll get it out there. Okay. And this is separate than the alternatives meeting. Or is it the same? Because it sounds like. Leave that to Tom to figure out. 
alternatives meaning extension. I like it. Yeah. Well, I would advocate making it one of your already scheduled meetings. Um, yeah, we'll touch base at tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff, though. Thank, Thank you for coming. coming. Yeah. You can stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. It's good things stuff coming up. So. Um, I'm only into my seat right now. Uh, just to keep things moving, I understand we got to come back, but. Susan is here, and maybe she would be interested in doing a little presentation on the Arab Freedom Grant. Questions, concerns, comments? She, 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 she is hiding. Oh my God. Would, you, would you be okay with you stealing their secrets or something? Um, I just want to let you know that I want to write a grant for some more CD at the Art of Freedom. Uh, I would like to get uh, pictures and and we'd like to have a handrail built on that loose hole that goes into the entrance. Is this another one of those AARP grants? Yeah. Not our book. No, no, AARP. No, no, no. Both parts. Right. I'm going to get my AARP card next week. What's that? Can the town have to? I don't know. Uh, Can the town have to? Are you aware? Are you, are you aware that there is already a proposal by the rail trail to develop? I just discovered that yesterday. Okay. So Rosemary probably raised a good question again. You probably don't want to be in competition with each other for the same funds. And I don't know if you can apply, if the same entity can apply to the same. Is it a different, is it a different grant program under AARP? There are three different categories in that. So the one that we just approved for the Rail Trail Committee is the um, Community Challenge Grant Program as mm -hmm. part of the Livable Communities Initiative. Right. Do you know if yours is the same one or is it a different? There are different components of that grant, I believe. Okay. The one I was applying for was for improving public places like parks. And yours was Brazil. Well, we approved um, Randall to work with the Rail Trail Committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're, if you want to write the grant, could you work with Randall to coordinate to see if there are any issues of compatibility for the same entity applying for, for applying for two grants? Yeah. And what I was going to say is that, and it, it looks like you want to apply for essentially that they're, what they're trying to apply for is benches, picnic tables. Bike racks, garbage cans, and maybe a few bike charging station. Mm -hmm. You want benches and a picnic table. It sounds like there's a lot of overlap there, um, and I, I think that it would be pretty easy to pull the two together. It might have been the same, same grant. I, 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 I think I think specifically said. Yeah, that, that was one of the, that was one of the places the that Kyle had mentioned was the Arboretum as, as one of the locations that their grant would cover. Um, so I think pulling the two of them together makes a lot of sense, and I mean, it makes a stronger grant application. Um, I just wish I knew that before I wrote the I do too. I wish yeah. I knew that. I didn't know uh, the name of the grant. Yeah, I, I am sorry that you put the effort in. Um, and if you don't mind sharing the effort with Randall, I'm sure yeah. he would appreciate it. And yeah, I, I think it. The, the fact that we've got two town committees working together on it is it was it a good position. Right? Yeah. It makes for a stronger application. And in too. the end, I just want to see the yeah. 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 And yeah. she did, Kyle did mention a bench, the uh, banking table that you were thinking about down there. So that was on her thought, yeah. on, on her radar. Well, what I didn't want to do is use the benches that Kyle wants to buy for the real trail. The tree board is not interested in scraping and painting 
benches to the spring. We want something we can leave outside for mm -hmm. maintenance, just wash it once a year, and we want to take care of trees. Um, there are already a couple of the eyeballs in the park. So I'm looking at track store Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, the five benches that I got in the grant that we were just awarded, um, that's what that is. So I'd like to be, <coughs> excuse me, I'd just like to be consistent grow because I'm a decorator. <laughs> I'm totally supportive of whatever needs to be done to file the grant application. If it's a combined grant, great. If you know, if not, I would support it as well. So, I, either way. Is that a motion? I believe we made a motion for the rail trail committee. I'm just trying to be consistent. I was like, do you have that, Donna? Maybe. You have what Duncan just said? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised at that. The rail, the rail trail, trail committee's motion. I, I need to look back up here. I think the motion was to authorize Randall to prepare and submit yeah. a grant. Oh, yeah, I, I believe so. Okay, so is he writing the grant? Yeah, they don't want to do the work. They, they just want the money. <laughs> so you are already written it. So, right. you know, you got the upper hand. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> Yeah. I just put together an email with uh, you, Kyle, and Randall to try to sort out if it can be two separate grants or combined, and then let Randall take it. I'm sure he'll he probably work with you uh, to get your language into the other grant or to uh, have two separate yeah. functional grants. I think we've already approved him to work on the grant, so we don't necessarily need a motion to roll other well, things into it. Uh, I think, in all fairness, there could be a motion that if the town is eligible to apply for two separate funds, that we could authorize Randall to work with Susan, and if not, we could authorize Randall to work with both committees. Can you make a motion? Uh, sound, I, it sounded a lot like a motion. Well, second. Well, either option works for me. I, I don't even know if that's clear. The question is, which one, which option is going to get funded? Because we both want to get both. I would like you to both get on there. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of competition for those grants. Randall being the community economic development specialist, I wholeheartedly myself would be on him. And he's I mean he's been in that world, so he's gonna be able to say like you're gonna have a stronger grant application if you're two committees together. And maybe there's some, you know, balance act, maybe instead of Rail trail getting two white charging stations, they get one and you get extra benches, but you don't get picnic. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but Randall would be able to say, yeah, it's a dumb idea for the town to apply to us for the same money, or it's a great idea to apply to us. And I just don't know the answer. Yeah. I, I think want... step one is like sorting out if there's two applications or one, and if they're like separate programs. Yeah. I want both committees yeah. to have the best chance to get the most possible that they want. I didn't understand it was the same grant earlier, otherwise I probably would have tried to combine the two. Yeah. We, can't, we did think it was an ARPA. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, coming out of the gate, I thought, I thought it was a, some sort of an ARPA grant. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the future, Susan, when, um, you know, I, I, I didn't know it was an a, the same AARP grant until um, right now when you first brought it up. Is it, um, I think when you email these, if you can maybe say the name of the grant, that might have, that would have been a flag to say, oh wait, you know, the rail trail is already doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's the board want to do here? I was forming a poorly worded motion, and Duncan seconded it before I said anything. Do you repeat your motion? Do you have anything written down for that, Donna? It didn't sound like a motion to me. Thank goodness, because I didn't think it was. I was trying to make it into a motion. So I'll move that. Um, Randall work with Sue and the tree board to determine the best option for moving forward with the AARP grant that Sue is seeking. <clears throat> and to authorize Randall to seek those funds as well, more than just work with Susan. Yeah, and, and probably the best um, solution possible and submit, yes. Second. 
All right, there's a motion on the floor and a second. Any further discussion? Third. There's a third on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any ayes have it. Thank you very much for that. Can I give you what you need, sir? Yes. Yeah. Is Randall in the office tomorrow? No, um, that's why I put together an email so you have his contact and just feel free to reach out to that email I just sent you. Yeah. He's pretty responsive. Um, one other question while I'm here. I discovered this morning that um, Hollywood has a program where they give away furniture. Like, what
historic house I minutes. Got, yeah, so I sent the minutes and Tom emailed minutes from the 20, 25th on pages five and six where discussion is. Some of the discussions relevant to what we were talking about too, by the way, not just the motions, um, but there's a couple of different motions at the end. Can you read those motions, Beth, or I can, my computer's about as fast as uh, dial up right now. I've got them right up here too. I mean, Duncan's computer's faster than mine. Um, and Duncan, if you want to go for it. So is it the one sh that begins Shane move to approve? Is that one you're looking at, yeah. Beth? Yeah. Okay. So Shane moved to approve the work proposed at the Historical Society of Holcomb House with the exception of floors and painting at an estimated cost of 552357. Mark second and motion was passed. Beth moved to approve Holcomb House floor repair by Emory Floors for 250. Shane second, motion was passed. Evan recused himself. Uh, Shane moved and Mark seconded to approve spending three thousand up to three thousand dollars for interior painting by Linda Hale at Holcomb House. Evan says he's in favor if it's a safety related item. Uh, the motion was eventually passed. So I've got a total of eleven thousand twenty three dollars for all three of those motions. And we have a proposal that we're looking at that's thirteen thousand nine hundred and fifty-two. So yeah. there's a couple thousand dollar delta between. And that one also did not follow the purchasing policy of ten thousand dollars. Well, they were separate. I, I don't have the printout, but I know that. Yeah, like Mary Jean provided it, and it was like. Broken out. The thing Broken is, out like sorry, I couldn't get off mute earlier, but the thing is, that very first motion is a motion that it excludes floors and painting. So that's everything else. That, like, I think, I think based on what I'm hearing, <clears throat> they need to fit within the bounds of what those motions were. And if the contract is set up not in that way, then I think we should be asking that the contract be set up in that way. Meaning everything that was discussed is part of one contract from those minutes. I'm sorry. And the flooring is separate and the painting is separate. So if they are going over budget on any of the things, they need to decide which of them is most important. or least important to cut. So as it stands now, I believe Duncan is right. And you are right. Uh, I, There's another piece. Um, the first motions that were made, this historical society was going to pay 5000 towards that project of 11000 putting the cost of the town of only $6,000. Now the town is being asked to pay 6700 or 60, is that right? 6, I thought they were being asked to. 6700 and then the historical society is going to raise their contribution to 7000 for the difference. So we're only to be asking clear, for seven hundred. Their more. request is to raise the proposed amount to come out of the reserve fund for that, right? Yes. You so know, it says the Historical Society Board of Trustees voted to contribute five thousand to the renovation. So but is that from Inc. or from the reserve fund? Do they have a separate um, Account. They have an ink account. And that's like the LLC. That's like a set. 501c3. It's a 501c3. And then so say the historical society has an awesome pie sale. They bring in like 30 grand. It was the best pie sale of the year. 
Where does that money go? The general fund. Like the two, the two zero five funds. Yeah. That goes into the into their general annual operating budget. Their operating budget. That's what yes. so it's just as revenue, and so if they don't spend it, it just goes to support the town. Well, in the past, if they have not spent, they have a capital reserve fund, um, and there's, I don't know, we went back and forth on this a number of times, but um, they have asked in the past to have the difference between what they took in and what they spent rolled into the reserve fund okay. um, to increase the reserve fund. And then a couple years ago, maybe, they actually added a line item in the in their budget for capital reserve fund. And that's the way that most of the committees operate that have a reserve fund. If they, <coughs> if they understand they have to request a certain amount to go into reserves. Well, some of them are actually set up automatically them. that way. So it's just interesting that I think there's also a fundamental breakdown in how the historical society views the reserve fund whether as it being select board control or their control. And just reading the minutes and then hearing, reading the email, it sounds like the select, the historical society is trying to like come together to say, hey, look, we have, feels like that they think it's their money. And they're saying, we're, we're willing to give this to the project too. And when I'm hearing the select board say, it's out, well, it's actually all our money, you know, whether it's reserve fund or budget. And it, you know, that's like an interesting, Part, right, which is really the select board's in control of both pieces. Uh, but that doesn't solve our problem for May. Our problem for May is what is the like, how does the board want to proceed when historical society, um, you know, have made some adjustments without letting us know at this point? We don't even really know what work changed. Because we have, we approved RFPs based on work, to, that, to your point, Evan. So to me, those motions indicate the work we approved with the money tied to it coming out of <clears throat> our town budget. <coughs> and also, separately, the Historical Society agreed to use their 501c3 money too. I don't know if that's actually the case. I think they were using, I think they were proposing to use reserve fund money. That would be my Oh, you think they were proposing to reserve? Yeah, I think the, so. Inc the Historical Society has no control over any funding. They're like two separate boards. Right. Yeah. Right. The Historical Society actually, there is a board for the 501c3, right. so that would require. They're totally. Yeah. They're, they're the firewall there. Okay, so they, okay, so that should have been clear when we first discussed it, because it didn't sound, so, I mean, that's not what I read in the minutes. Well, you know, to be fair to the Historical Society, they, they voluntarily put, um, there was 30,000, I think, from the Roger Jones Fund that they rolled into the reserve fund, or was it 25,000? So there was, I mean, there was a pretty good sum of money that the historical society brought from other donors and donations, which they rolled into the reserve fund, um, which is now uh, over, it's like 37, 38,000, 35,000. Yeah. I mean, to be completely honest, from my perspective, the reserve fund is the historical society's money. We are the caretakers of the purse string, mostly. So I hear you and I agree with you. Like, it's the historical society's money. That's why it's in a reserve fund for historical society. Oh, and they raised the money. But they, as a practical matter, once it becomes a reserve fund, they really should seek the select board approval to spend that money. It's not, it's their well, they money. Well, they are required to. Like, it's not right. even that they should. It's that that's one of the balances we have in place with reserve funds. 
it's in, it's actually in statute. So. No, oh, I, I understand that, but yeah. in general, we you cut them a lot of leeway. Well, I, 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 I that they raised absolutely. To, uh, I would uh, not for a minute tell them that they couldn't spend the money out of their reserve fund. To that end, that is one item that we need to deal with. That should probably have its own motion to re retroactively authorize the use of how much Rosemary? You said a check was cut out of the reserve fund. How much was it for? We say not to exceed $4,700 in the final. I think that. Well, no, I'm going to talk about $5,000. So why wouldn't we just say $5,000? Uh, the request is seven, but I think, but it's just not that clear. Uh, my point is that money, is, was, that money was okay. already spent. We need to retroactively authorize it. I that. understand what you're saying. But in the minutes of September 25th, it was 5000 not 4700 Did it say from the reserve fund? It didn't. It said they voted to... Uh, I think you're talking about, you're talking about our, our minutes, Beth, right? Yeah, yeah I'm talking about our minutes, From the 25th yes. of September. Yeah, but in those minutes, it says... It says the Historical Society, that's from our minutes of September 25th. It says the Historical Society Board of Trustees voted to contribute 5,000 to the renovation. Evan asked if that is coming from the Johnson Historical Society, Inc., or the town budget. Dean said it will come from the Historical Society. Evan asked it won't come out of the general town budget. Historical Society members said no. I, I suspect, and I don't know, but I suspect that their interpretation of not coming out of the town budget is that they want to spend money out of the reserve fund to so pay for those expenses. That's fair. Suspicion. So, what do we do here? I'm a, I make a motion to retroactively approve the spending of up to $5,000 out of the Historical Society Reserve Fund. Second. Mr. Molson, or second, any further discussion? I don't think that, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't think it, to me the bigger question is, are we going to approve the contract that they have executed, right, wrong, or otherwise. Um, I think that's a separate action, though. Well, let me finish. Um, because I think how they pay for that contract is integrally tied up in the motion of how much they get to take out of the reserve fund. Yeah, but either way, if we approve spending up to $5,000 out of the reserve fund, the balance can be discussed. You know what I mean? They're spending at least 5000 so the balance of that can be discussed from operating. But it's a totally different scope of work um, is part of the problem. The if, we, if we don't approve of the project, I'm just throwing this out there as devil's advocate. If the board does not approve of the project, that money is already spent out of the reserve fund. The contractor is already mobilized, we'll call it. We're not going to get that money back from the contractor. No, he's going to do, you know, he's going to do the forty-six fifty worth of work. Yeah, but Duncan, back to the, I hear you on the new contract stuff, but like when I'm just, when we're talking about retroactively, it's retroactive based on the discussion from that nine twenty five meeting, <laughs> and that meeting says five thousand to the renovation. It's very generic, which to me means that they can take 
5,000 out of the reserve fund or any part of funding the renovation. So Beth is, Beth is codifying what happened on September 25th and still in approval of that work happening. Is that correct, Beth? I don't know what you just said. Just nod your head. No. He was correct for what's been agree with you. He, he, was, he was parroting back what you said. In a nice way. It was close enough. So, if you take the current contract that they have signed with Seth Manchester, and we allow, we retroactively authorize spending 5000 out of the reserve fund, that leaves a balance of $8,952 out of that $13,952. Who's going to pay for that? That's a great question. I think it's a different question. So coming at this, so can we just say, is there a second? Uh -huh. I think she has There's no second. Huh? It's been so long now, I can't remember. No second. I can't remember. No, no, I second. No, I think she has second. So we're in the discussion phase. Okay. Oh, yeah, you just second it. I was trying to. Let's go back to the. The thing is, like, I understand what you're saying about the funding of all the other, all the rest of it, and I agree with you, but if the very first chunk of money that goes out the door is the $5,000, like let it go out of the reserve fund. All right, Jen. You know it's it's Check behind us out. now, and now we can focus on the balance. That's kind of my thought around approve, retroactively approving the five thousand. Getting the temperature of the board real quick. Pet check. All right. Vote. Okay, can we take uh, a vote of the board? Uh, on that motion, uh, sure. All in the vote, all those in favor of saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Opposed. Duncan's opposed. Okay. I'm opposed as well, Donna. Okay. But the motion passes. Um, so back, that motion's set to have authorization to take $5,000 out of the reserve fund. To take already half. That's already been cut short. Um, yeah, but it's not enough. It's not nearly enough. Now we're on now, another whole oh, okay. Now we're on the conversation topic of if we approve of the project changes or not. Exactly. Um, not knowing what they are, I'm just going to throw it out there that I am not comfortable with the change. And we can do a quick board temperature check and maybe make this conversation quick. I don't love when costs go up. With no information behind it. Right. 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 Um, yeah. I think there are also ramifications of having whether the board, whether the historical trustees acted properly or not. I think they acted in good faith to approve a contract with South Manchester. There has been a contract signed. I'm pretty concerned about reneging on any kind of a signed contract, whether the Historical Society technically had the authority to sign that contract or not. Yeah. Well, well, concern. But, but, but to your point earlier, which is why I think you were partially opposed to the earlier motion, <clears throat> there are other funds in their reserve. And I think it's worth having a conversation about whether or not additional funds should be approved to cover the balance. Mark? I, I'm not ready to give them a yes vote on this, but I'll have more information. And I, I really need to know a number, just exactly how much more they're asking from the town to pitch in. It's about, it's about $700. Uh, it's it's between 13, 50, 952 and 11,000, whatever it was. Yeah, but, but, but they're raising, but they're, yeah, but they're putting in an additional 2,000 from the reserve fund. They would like to put in with that additional. They are proposing to do that. That's, that gets to the point of, do we authorize an additional 2,000 to come out of the reserve fund? 
I think we, I mean, it sounds like we need more information from them. It sounds, I would like to have another meeting with them to go over some of this stuff. I mean, it's- Did we ask like, them to join? I think someone said something about Mary Jean possibly coming tonight, but- I, I thought she was she's just not here. Um, I, I, I just don't think we're ready to make a, a decision on that aspect of it tonight. And what we have done tonight takes care of what's already happened. So they, I mean, if you if you go by strictly what was approved at the September 23rd meeting, if I'm reading that, they have authority to spend up to $11,952. Now, there's a difference in the scope of work. So that, you know, that was predicated, I mean, how far into the weeds do we want to get on this? That was predicated on some estimates to do a certain amount of work. Some of that work is not included at all in this proposed contract, such as standing on floors. Could you give us just a quick overview of what the proposal is? Is it just painting? Yeah, it's primarily, if I'm reading the contract phase one, scope work, clean, remove all loose plaster, fill, uh, you know, fill the plaster in the hallway, stairwell, hallways, living room, two bedrooms, and one bedroom closet, not the kitchen. Uh, not the kitchen. Um, phase two is to install new dry, drywall in the hallway ceiling, which is in bad shape, um, to tape and mud, and then um, it's painting. And I will say that I think I remember reading somewhere that Johnson Hardware, Johnson Farm and Garden, is donating all of the paint Correct. And, and to the project. Yeah, for painting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't Thank see whether there was any yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I got inside of that, there was anything. The reduction in cost, the amount of paint being reduced from the scope, I was kind of blown away. I want to reduce the cost. Because the original I, cost was over 15. Yeah, well, no, it was like 14 and change, wasn't it? Yeah. Reduction like a reduction on a thousand dollars for something like so, 20 gallons of paint or I'm like, if you approve. Was just part of this. He, he wants, I'm sure, uh, the contractors want to go in, blow it out, and go to the next job. Oh, wholeheartedly. You know, and it also feels like, you know, shame on the historical society for moving faster than the board, you know, not understanding the process of getting the, the contract signed by the board. Shame on me for not being a better community. Shame on Rosemary for signing the check, right? Like, there was a lot of miscommunication that happened, but the, the work still needs to get done. And like, do you want to hold it up for two weeks? Like, what more information do you know, do you need to know, to know that the work needs to get done? For clarity, I'm not trying to shame anybody. I'm just trying to think and do the best I can for the world. So I'm sorry if it feels like that, Rosemary Tom. No, no, but I mean, it's just, um, it feels like we just... Wholeheartedly, reading that scope makes me less apt to approve that. Um, are they just burying what's on the ceiling with more sheetrock and adding layers? Or they wanted an insulation report done. Why are we burying the ceiling to, to do that? I'm not sure. In the end, we're talking about seven hundred dollars. Uh, we're talking about twenty, yeah, twenty-seven hundred, seven hundred from the town, and two thousand additional from the reserve fund. Which is going over budget on a line item that we already asked to be reduced by five percent to do work that I'm not sure is in the best interest of the building. I'm very interested in getting. The raw areas fixed. I don't know if I'm so interested in putting new sheetrock in the upstairs apartment where they've said multiple times they're just going to store stuff in. Could we, could we buy some throw towel, like homing blankets for now to protect the artifacts and maybe not spend this extra money? I don't know. How about this? Somebody want to make the motion? Or, I, yeah, I feel like we have the need to provide clear direction for Tom to get answers from the Historic Society. 
you know, a request of surveillance, or we need to den deny the project, which town committees already spoke for out of turn, or we can just move forward with the same dollar amount that they already had to go ahead to do. Am I missing another avenue? What are the wishes of the board? Beth, do you want to throw something out there? No, I'm just confused. I'm confused by the original scope compared to the new. Me too. So I don't really know what to think, to be completely honest. How about this? Can we can we press the deposit for purchasing stuff? They have authorization to do it's already been done. They're gonna need to ask the contractor to press pause and then for our next select board meeting. That's what I see. If the board wants to have an additional select board meeting to keep this project moving for the historic society, that's fine. But it seems like we need some answers. I would just throw out there too in the category of <clears throat> discussion. Um, the Historical Society has done, I think, a lot of work to try and come up with a proposal, to try and come up with a contractor who's able to do the work. I don't think it was easy to find somebody to do the scope of work, and so I, I guess I feel like we should give them some support and credit for having come up with a a proposal. It may not be exactly the scope that we're thinking about, but we're we're talking about this at 20 minutes in a select board meeting. They've been dealing with it for months. Maybe some of my questions are born in confusion. Um, just not having and they might be able to answer them very quickly if somebody was here. Um, which That's unfortunate. So mine are definitely in confusion, and I recognize the work that they do. I know they do a lot. Um, I'm just a little confused because of the priorities we've talked about in the past compared to what we're talking about right now. So I think I just need, I just need help with a, a level set. Yeah. And for, I, I want to make sure that we're doing it right. You know, if, if we approved a certain scope of work for a certain dollar figure, I mean, we kind of explicitly laid out what each section of the work was going to cost, then we should make sure that anything that does come out of it matches that, and yeah. Or we see a revised scope of work. Right. Which I, I, I'm, I'm I, entirely comfortable with seeing a different scope of work. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw this contract for the first time today. I heard about the issue for the first time today, um, so... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit like, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, too. Yeah, you so were the best prepared. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. even know. Yeah, you had a copy of the contract. You're well, the only reason I had it is because I went to the Historical Society today to help with collections and wrote in uh, Mary Jean cornered me and asked me about the meeting, so, you know, which I, you know, I didn't know much about. So, so it's uh, I think one thing that I, I think there are maybe two items that we should try and clarify with the Historical Society Board. A, authorization to spend the reserve fund comes from the select board, not the, not the board of the trustees. They can make a proposal, which I would be extremely um, reluctant to deny any requests that they might have to spend their reserve fund. Um, but, but they need to just know that that authority derives with the select board, not not them as a board. And the second thing is, it is right, wrong, or otherwise a town building, and the town ultimately needs to have the say so over what gets done. And, you know, technically this contract shouldn't have been executed by the historical society. It should have been, because it doesn't fit the scope of work that was identified in the minutes, etc. I didn't even know there was a was a contract. Yeah, right. right. You're surprised too. Yeah, I yeah. think there's you know there's some fun. And going. then you know I found out after the fact that the marriage meeting we went um, got a check. I didn't even know that was happening. Um, last I knew was we had an email that said okay let's talk about it at the next meeting. Uh, I think that was your suggestion. Yeah, yeah so I, I think you know we try, need to try and without 
you know, I, I fully understand and appreciate the volunteer efforts, and I want to encourage them and support them. But there needs to be a clearer understanding of how to get from point A to point B. Yeah. Um, would the contract, would the board consider approving that scope of work on that contract or no? Not tonight. I mean, read it. I, I, yeah, without or having actually. What Duncan just read out loud about phase one, two, three. I, I need to have a chance to actually look at it before I can feel like <coughs> on it. Okay. Yeah. That sounds. Taking the temperature, temperature of the board as a whole, it sounds to me unfortunate, but the project needs to be put on hold until there's more clarity. Am I correct in us doing that? I ultimately envision approving it as soon as I have had a chance to actually read the thing, but I can't in good conscience vote to approve something that I have only heard read out to me and, you know. Right. Uh, throwing an option out there, and then we're moving on. We could vote <coughs> to authorize um, you know, Beth to sign the contract. She hasn't heard from other board members by 3 p.m. tomorrow or something of that nature. That's my only means of meeting in the middle. Uh, I I, other than that, that, it's going to come up with the next meeting. I, I'm actually, I'm all for doing that. I think it's off our next meeting agenda. It's not in my mind getting it off the agenda. It's trying to Moves the project I forward. Yeah. The work and appreciate the work that's been done, but yeah. I haven't yeah. had enough time to even voice anything on it, even though I'm one of the top the whole time. Right. If the board wants to do that, somebody's going to make a motion, otherwise, we're going to move on to the next item. So, your, your basic concept would authorize someone to either agree or countersign the contract, but it still leaves open the question of how we pay for it. You're right. That has to be an open meeting, regardless. I mean, if you're going to approve the contract, there's only one way to pay for it, and that's... Well, there's multiple ways to pay for it. I, I personally believe that more is going to need to come out of the reserve fund to, take, at the very least, get their line item for building maintenance to a 5% reduction of 7000 I don't think that's a huge ask, and I think they'd meet in the middle, but nobody's here for the store side of the board to verify that. I mean, it's your, I mean, what's the total amount for the 14,000? 13,952, 13,952, 30 cents. <clears throat> um, you know, authorize up to 6,650 to be spent out of uh, the budget, out of the, and the remaining portion to come out of reserves and maybe give authority to a select board member to negotiate with the contractor to try to reduce the total amount of the contract or, you know. Yeah, I, I, I would advocate authorizing the, so if, 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 the, if the board of trustees want to set additional money from the reserve fund, come out, they should make that request uh, to, to the board, um, which, again, I wouldn't have any issue creating that. But they also have a pretty good chunk of money in the, in the 501c3 that they could ask the 501c3 board, will you give us, you know, 1,500 bucks or whatever it would be to contribute to that cut. So I, I guess I would leave that up to the Board of Trustees as to how to come up with the uh, historical society's share of the <coughs> contract cost. Sounds like we're waiting until the next meeting. We're ready to move on. It's unfortunate, um, but it's the only way I'm seeing getting finite answers. I do believe that some good has come out of this. The historic society could meet, they could watch the video understand the ask from the select board, where would they like to come up with the remainder of the figures, or the remainder of the funding, and we would like a recommendation on where they would like that to come from, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 
I, I think the, the minutes of the meeting and the, and the votes that were taken were fairly specific, so yeah. it doesn't leave us a lot of latitude, I guess. And again, again, I'm happy to I'm happy to entertain a different proposal um, and make a new motion. You know, make a motion yeah. that supersedes the motion that was taken in September. But, right. But it would be nice to understand where the money is coming from and, exactly. and have a little bit of head, heads up on what's going on. I believe we're moving forward. Is that clear? Your project is on hold. So the next meeting. Uh, next item, Dean and the Black Matters boss here. And a local agreement for paneling. Still in its infancy. At this time, I believe you're, recommend, you're recommending the board to delegate a select board member. This is actually a conversation uh, between Ron and I. Okay. And uh, just to so, um, I, I, I haven't talked to Dean about this at all. This well, is just, yeah. yeah. So this is the, um, there's a, two towns that are coming together to create an annual local agreement, very similar to the assessor contract that we just moved forward. And so just getting ahead of the game, we don't know what's gonna happen in the next two weeks. If the board could just simply delegate somebody tonight to represent Johnson in any, in any talks that happen, and, uh, regarding just like Duncan was the liaison for that, um, the board picked somebody tonight just so that way it can move forward without waiting for a meeting. Just to try to get ahead of the game. Well, it's so not to wait for a meeting, anyways, for approval. Yeah, this is, this is just this is just to get somebody for the board to say, "Hey, Duncan, could you mind being the liaison for the inner local council agreement?" Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you like dogs. As long as there's no cats involved, there's cats. <laughs> I, I, I was going to volunteer for this one. I don't know. There you go. Go ahead. Volunteer. Yeah. I don't believe we need a motion. It's not a committee, but you got my consensus. Okay. All right. And, and, I'll, I'll, and I'll be um, the backup volunteer. He'll be my, my dog consultant. Where's the alternate? I'll be the feline consultant. Uh, <laughs> the alternate? Yeah. Next <laughs> item. Hey, group. Really? So I think this is actually an important one. Like, I there's a lot of details around this one. So Shane, thanks for taking that. Um, I just would like to ask that if we have conflicting board meetings with the Kemlin discussions, which have happened every time they've met at this point, it would be really good if we could request that another date be found that Johnson can participate to, like Johnson's like board can participate to. <clears throat> and if not, um, Shane, it might be that it might mean that you might have to choose the Kemling meeting over the start of our select board meeting. Um, but I just want to throw that out there that I think the first request should be that it not conflict. With our select board meeting. Okay. Oh, you set me up on that one, Shane. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, our next item is uh, VSU Johnson. No, it's a collapsed building. Oh, we were just concerned. No, our next item is number 17. That's fine. Cool. VSU Johnson. Johnson is requesting permission to use Legion Field on May 11. Why isn't it 16? Because we've already done it. I just. I, I threw out 17, I'm sticking with it. Oh, okay. Can <laughs> <laughs> we go back to 16? After this one's right. done. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I move that we give him permission to use the Legion field. I'll second it. Motion, second. Okay. Any further discussion? Did they fill out a uh, facility use application? No. I did. They, they didn't mention that we're going to use the community oven, so. I would, but, I mean, they, they were at, they're asking for. Um, involving other com uh, committees, so I was going to recommend that the oven committee be one of the committees we volunteer. Maybe REC, if REC is interested, <clears throat> and possibly um, Tuesday Night Live might be interested in helping in some way, perhaps. 
I mean, I'm just gonna throw this out there. The store side makes some great pies. Some in particular. Like, that's a great spot to do pies. But anyways. So um, what's your point, Beth? My point is that it's more than just them hosting an event. It's them working with our community. Yeah. Both, you know, providing a good time. But also, it's, I think, an opportunity for our committees to connect with the college. Sounds good. And they're talking, bringing some food trucks, maybe, and it's, it's going to be a, you know, a nice big event, uh, keeping in this built until, you know, if they got uh, whatever they might need to utilize, if one portal it is enough, or if we got to coordinate for two for that weekend or something like that. Keeping that in mind and power and water usage. Wonderful. Any further discussion? Um, sorry, I have one other thing. The other thing is that they talk about having a bonfire, mm -hmm. and while Legion Field is our field, um, there also also are utilities that run around and under um, Legion Field. So I think we should just make sure that there's no utility issue if they're going to do things like that. Maybe they can use the fire pits. That That's what I was going to offer, yeah. Those fire wings that we have, that we already use. We were using this weekend. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. I still think they should fill out a facility use application. Yeah, I just asked her to reach out to me. Now we need to do it. Listen, even if we don't need it, it has to happen. It's good to have it, for sure. Yeah. Forms right on the website. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Number 16, scheduled hearing for dilapidated buildings. <coughs> What's the board's wishes? Can we do that? Do we have time in our next board meeting? Uh, I need 15 days for a hearing for notice. That has to be the and our next. next well, this could tie in really well with our addition of rescheduling our next meeting. If we don't do it on Monday, we do it on Wednesday. On Tuesday, it'll be 15 days, but we have to get it out. So I have yeah, to do it tomorrow. If I got the hearing notice out tomorrow. We have to do it Wednesday. We might have to do it. Our next meeting will be pretty light. It'll be Because it goes in the news. I guess if we get it online and on boards tomorrow, <laughs> and it'll be in the news and citizen on Thursday. Does our I say when I I would days? like to just say Wednesday. Yeah. I, I don't know. I know most other hearings I'm are with you, Matt. This is Wednesday the 21st. I think our window says 10. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That Wednesday the 21st, 6 p.m. Yeah. for the hearing, 6.30 yeah. for a board meeting. Sounds good. Beth just answered two of them, but I didn't hear what you said. Did you write it down, Tom? I did. What did you say, Beth? 6 o'clock for the hearing. 6 p.m. hearing, 6.30 board meeting. On Wednesday the 22nd. The 21st. Sure. Uh, which Wednesday we're meeting? That Wednesday. I'm going to look at it. Wednesday, 21st. It's really good there, Beth. The 21st. Sounds good. Are you good with that, Dean? Yeah, just double check on my calendar. Okay. Hearing will be from 6 to 6 30. 21st of February, I'm assuming. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Whatever this month is. Just for clarity, that cleaned up our rescheduling. On the next meeting item two. Mm. Any issues with fingers? I don't think so. Okay. That should be good. Um just real quick uh just to update. Um I have no more updates. Um the communication that I had with the the son, um, and he said he was gonna have his dad get a hold of me. Um, I reached out by email again saying, hey, can you please make sure that your dad gets a hold of me? Here's my phone, here's my email, and have yet to uh, have any communication from the actual owner as of yet. But still trying to go to that route. Yeah, I think all we can do is the best we can to make contact with him, and if we have to have the hearing, uh, you know, if he's present for the hearing, great. If he's not, um, the board needs to act on your um, on your evaluation. Um, 
would would the board want me to if I did if I did get in contact with him between now and then, is there anything that I should share about this? Should I just inform him of the meeting? Is there anything formally that I should be giving to him to inform him of the meeting coming up? Just yeah, you should send him our ordinance. And <clears throat> also, the hearing could be canceled if he... I mean, there are ways that it could be canceled, but he'd have to be very active in cleaning up. Yeah, he could come up with an action plan and you guys could approve no, it. No, not just a plan. Oh, was it? We would need to see evidence of cleanup quickly. Um, okay. Do we want to inform him of what the fines will, will be? If he reads the ordinance, he'll know what that is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just in case. Okay, I think that's that. Um, the appointment policy Oops. review and approval. Um, I do believe that there was a late minute comment on this from a member of the public uh, to the select board. And wholeheartedly, I haven't read that comment. Is he zooming in? It was about our current process for appointment, and it doesn't match the, um, it doesn't, for appointments, it doesn't match the proposed um, and then it talks about terms and how vacated terms are complicated factors. I'm not sure I agree with that comment specifically. Um, <clears throat> and the, one, the one thing that I did um, kind of take away from the email that I think may be worth adding um, is that we would ask for um, the, in, in the volunteer and municipal volunteer groups role, we would add um, a, a third point to provide a list of all upcoming openings in a timely manner before town meeting day, um, just to sort of address the, the question of terms that are ending uh, that need to be reappointed. But I, yeah. I think that's the only the only piece. Well, there was also yeah. He also talked about the website not being updated. That that's the okay. piece that I think definitely needs to be addressed, but maybe doesn't require any changes to the policy. Yep, and um, also talked about the day after town meeting is when the organizational meeting occurs and appointments occur, which is true. Um, and that that's not referenced. And then there was one other. <coughs> it's just, I just forgot. The reappointments. Oh yeah, yeah, it was reappointments. The reappointments are, okay. So I think this is a communication issue with uh, the town historically, is what I want to say. Um, because I know that year, I know that every year I've been on the board anyway, I've asked for clarity on whether individuals have been asked whether or not they want to be reappointed. Um, sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes it's no. Um, but I think that we do need to reach out and make sure that anyone who's terms up, first of all, knows their term is up. And secondly, um, specifies whether or not they're interested in <coughs> renewing their term. <coughs> and also, the point was made that anyone interested in a term that is expiring, um, there should be allowance for other candidates who express interest. And while I don't think we explicitly disallow that, we also don't 
proactively um, state what appointments, what terms are open. Uh, and to be completely honest, we didn't have a great record of those terms and those uh, positions anyway until last year. Last year was the year we actually got firm terms on each of the appointments. Um, so there's a lot about the appointments. My takeaway is that you want to add appointment terms, start and end dates, meaning all, all appointments start on the, organization, the organizational meeting following town meeting, and they end um, at the, the same, you know, at the end of a number of years at the same time, and that so that needs to be added to this, and then vacancies is covered in this, but then. Um, you want to add a piece about advertising to be open seats, is that correct? When a term is ending. Yeah. And so, yeah, both renewing and open. One thing I was hoping to do for next year for the town report was post um, having a list of all the committees, members, their term limit, their term, and, like, and their end date, and that would kind of solve that. That already will go into the town report. And so, the auditors. And do that, so, that's that's great. Then that serves that purpose. You know, then you're kind of putting out a public notice of who's ending. Um, and those open seats are now publicly. Yeah. Unless, so you're asking for like something more. More than that. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I thought I maybe heard Beth saying that there might be like maybe another thing put into the select board's role part of it that kind of clarifies um, our part in making the reappointments and, and filling, you know, so that doing turn ends, advertising that as well. Um, well, I think that would like be some statute. Right. But yeah, so, are, are, am I understanding that correctly that you're saying we add another provision somewhere to the select board's role? Uh, I think what Tom just said would do that. Okay. When he's saying that appointments, well, maybe it's that, that appointments occur <clears throat> the first organizational select board meeting following town meeting would be the better way to say it, just in case there's a day or two in between. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I think that would fall into like virtual, yeah. We have the language for the select board's role addition that we want to add in. Um, so I don't want to already make a motion on that. I, I can give you the language for the, the extra piece I wanted to put in for the municipal volunteer group's role about providing a list of upcoming openings before town meeting day. If that's on that list of the board. I mean, given that it's information only. I don't see what you can for the whole board, we're not that done in either. Um, we can move on if everybody's comfortable with that. I confess that I was reading this and not paying attention. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, Beth had proposed an additional piece for the select board's role, basically clarifying that we are the ones that make appointments and reappointments. Um, at the first well, then it's not. Can Tom read what he just wrote? Because I think it's more in line with what Tom's like. Um, just to add term term dates, um, term like 
part of the appointment in the first paragraph would be, you know, all appointments start on at the first organizational meeting following town meeting and end on the first organizational meeting following town meeting in the corresponding year, the end of your appointment. Um, just so that way it's, it like defines when, when you start and then vacancies would then terminate. Not sorry, before the vacancies, I'm sorry, just to confuse things further, it's not actually true always. Maybe it's unless otherwise noted because we have appointments that we make that are like county appointments that we don't set the start date for other entities do. Like Loma Fibernet is an example. They're in like April or May or something. Yeah, it sounds like, um, I mean, we're not gonna solve, we're not gonna solve tonight. Anything with a not defined uh, term on it. Start date will be yeah. 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 something like that. But are you okay with typing something like that up, Beth? Shift right up to Tom. You can type up your amendments, and then Tom just copy paste them in so that Yeah, I, I really want to focus on putting this to bed. There are like serious, like it would be nice to like get us procurement policy and more important policies that affect the day to day life of the town, and and we've been like hanging on to this for months. Yeah, it's like know. like put it to bed, make it better, and then like we gotta get to the stuff that actually matters. We looked at it before budget, and I got like totally out of the mindset of it, and that's not all. Yeah. So, um, I think we're. Oh, I'm sorry. The one other thing um, that I wanted to ask before we move on is that um, racial justice and social equity committee was not included on here. I know it is currently defunct, but it still is an existing committee, so I think that should be included in. So before any other yes. not listed, yes. just other listed funds. It should be in Sorry, the listed where? There's no, I don't see groups. Um, the, the, we the, shouldn't list, okay. We shouldn't. Uh, if we should list no groups at all, then we should list no groups at all. If we're going to list groups, then we should list all of them that exist. Well, at the end, it says, and any other current or future town. Right. What, what, I, what I'm saying is that if there's one in particular that we have elected not to enumerate, yeah, and it's I this particular one, it might raise some questions. Just none. Yeah, just none. Just don't list any. <laughs> if we don't list any, then that's, that's fine. fine. Um, are you good, Beth? Wonderful. Are you good, Duncan? So is the, is the suggestion to strike? These municipal groups may include from now yeah. on. From now on, they include any, all of them. The thing is, we are quickly coming upon appointment season, and Tom, I understand you just want to put it to bed, but I don't want to create something that isn't supporting what we're going to ha what is going to happen um, coming up in the next month and a half. So. Or less, I guess, probably at this point. With regard to your suggested language about the terms beginning and beginning or ending at town meeting, you could have a comma except as required by statute. Yeah, absolutely. Ex except where a different date is required by statute or something like that. Or outside of the yeah, body, um, body or it's outside of the control of the town. Well, Harvard is the perfect example because there's like April and Brownsfield committee is the same. Deal. Sorry to drag it out forever. Um, so I'm I'm adding the appointment piece, you're sending language and Beth is sending language. Yeah, and then you're striking all the committees pretty much. Perfect. I'll, I'll put a sentence in there, I suppose. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Vermont Division of Historic Preservation Grant and the old mill house? There is a... That was a pretty quick email. Really long email exchange. Yeah, that, that was supposed to be just back, but, you know. So, there's funding available for historic preservation. 
And just, um, do you guys want to me to pursue that funding for the mill house? To see, looks like there's grants up to twenty thousand, um, and if we could, that building is in need of some attention, and um, or, or to the Holcomb House point, you know, as another one where we have these older buildings that need immediate attention. Are you okay if I use my resources to try to acquire those grants? Well, it's broad because we don't have like a specific focus item, but I think trying to repair the buildings is good. I'm all in favor of it. My concern and question would be for Tom, knowing that you're already overburdened with things in a 32-hour work week. Is this something we should ask Randall to do instead of you? I would, I would love Randall to do it. It's just, uh, you know, this is where the email thread suggest we're talking about it at the meeting. <laughs> so now we're talking about it at the meeting. <laughs> um, if the board uh, wants Randall to work on it, I, yeah. I'm not getting any objections. I don't yeah. want Randall to work on it personally, just because there's really a lot happening with PDA and those other grants. And I I guess I question what the work is on this right now. Like, do we have an assessment of what each of these buildings needs? Like a full comprehensive assessment? That would be so nice. So we know what we're asking for? Um, and I assume we have to loop the village in on this. Those old mill house, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. I don't think that, I have a tough time believing they wouldn't be supportive as long as there was no funds. As long as there was okay. monetary value uh, regarding the village. Um, you may have said this, Tom. What does this cover? Like, is this would this cover that assessment? Would this cover actual? It's very open ended. Okay. It's just an announcement of available funding. Three hundred nineteen thousand dollars to be sent to be put towards. Well, we know the chimney's falling apart. Um, yeah, we know the building is cut. I mean, just the lead paint alone is going to be fifteen thousand. Yeah. Oh, he's. You know, so like that, that's like a major one. We get that cleaned up and painted. That alone would preserve that building for 25 more years. You know? I've, I'm fine with making that the target, the lead paint. Yeah. Uh, if we could do it. I don't think you can do it for 15, but. <laughs> well, if we could make that the target, just yeah. so it's kind of like we're giving Tom permission to work on it, and this is ideally what we'd like to do. Understanding the turtles with the villages, it's a short time frame. Town meetings coming up, Tom's already burdened. Maybe we just say, not a great time this year. Going along, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm just, you know, I need to rely on you, Tom, to tell us if you have the capacity to do something. To be, with us. To be honest, when I looked into it, the this is a there's no timeline on this. You know, it's not like I have to do it tomorrow. This is this is something that's like okay, now <clears throat> through email, it was just said, hey, let's talk about it at the meeting. It got on the agenda. Now you're saying, Tom, do it. It's going to go on that list of old business for me to do. And so I'm going to have five minutes. I'm going to get in there and figure out where the application process is and where it's at. And then we'll probably regroup at that point. So that's a, that's a qualified yes. I think I've got that capacity. That was a, that was a very long yes. I like it. I like that layout. It's been a old business. <coughs> down the road. Exactly. Wholeheartedly. Bless you. Mark, Shane, Beth, we good? Yep. He just said five minutes, so there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so. He's a lot to mess Beth, you, you didn't disagree. Did you hear everything Tom said? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, we have an added item uh, of Lenway Lane to deal with, and we have two executive sessions. So, um, pardon my tardiness, I don't have that email. What? Lane, yeah. So the quick part of Lenway Lane is um, That's the email you sent. Yeah. So what we found out is we the bank is sloping, and it in time is going to threaten Lenway Lane. Um, as we know, Lenway Lane is a class three road that goes out to one one house, I believe, and that project um, FEMA. Could, could support 
arboring that bank to protect the roadway. Um, it's going to cost uh, the town the twelve and a half percent match, uh, considerable, probably about twenty thousand dollars just to protect that. Um, and then we just found out that uh, that would include the engineering. And so then we got a um, EPW grant, um, EWP grant from the USDA. Uh, NRCS, and we're right now at a tipping point where we have to choose FEMA or choose um, EWP, and so um, with that, this, so both are open, both options are open, we can choose one or the other. One includes engineering here, and what we found out today is that normally NRCS provides the engineering to, to do that, to work on the bank. If it were a FEMA project? If it were not a FEMA project. If it, we're a FEMA project, the, we pay for the engineering and they reimburse at 12 and a half percent, you know, less 12 and a half percent. Um, if we do uh, EWP now, we have to pay for engineering and we'll be re reimbursed for it up to 10% of the total project, um, which is probably somewhere between, you know, 15 to $30,000 is what we'll be reimbursed for. Hyde Park just went through that process. They got a rough estimate from an engineer, similar situation, and the engineering alone was 46000 So the town is looking at having to spend $30,000 just for engineering, just to have to have to pay the match to have the bank armor. And so here we have a, a road that we're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars on that goes out to one house that hasn't, it's like at risk, and so, do you want to move forward with one of those two projects, or do we do nothing, and then the next time there's a flood, then we make this decision? Or do we want to look at reclassifying to a legal trail just to keep the right of way open, and then it takes all future responsibility off the town to, to repair that? Just to confirm, this is the class four section of the road, or the class three section of the road? Class three. Class three. There's no class four section. It's class four. It's class three. Oh, oh, oh I thought one. the latter half was class four. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, Brian was wrong on that. So, um, I don't know what the board's wishes are. Given cash flow issues and everything going on this summer, I am in support of a hybrid, and the hybrid is do nothing for now and put it on the old business list, understanding that there's a lot of moving things going on right now. Money-wise and business-wise, sounds like Mark's in agreement with me. I, I have a question. Um, if we did, if we, I am leaning more towards going down the FEMA path because we've got FEMA funding now. If the next time it floods and that falls into the river, but it's not a FEMA event, then we're on the hook for fixing it all. Unless you just continue, unless you make it a legal trail, I suspect the Lenways would want to weigh in on that. Uh, it's a long hearing. There's several hearings, I think. Yeah, in order to change. Oh, I think we have to get that a plus three road. Yeah, they probably did. They pay to upgrade it. Oh yes. So they spent tens of thousands of dollars to take it from a trail to a class three, <coughs> and now their property's on the market. And there's and there's also other. Other properties, lot of offers, a huge parcel there. That's so anyway, your suggestion of moving it to a trail probably isn't going to fly. It'll involve us hiring lawyers. So, my question is, but I, I like where you're headed, Evan. But the next time it falls into the river may not be a FEMA event. In which case, if the water is flowing that fast at that height there, what's the probability of it not being that at least I don't know how many million dollars threshold it is per county? How much does it take? I, I don't know the end. I don't know what that yes. bank looks like. Is that bank naturally just going into the river with that one way or the other, or is it going something? Tom, is the is the FEMA process right now a, a, a 
on, on medication piece or I think it's repair for the slum. I don't know. I'm texting Ron right now actually. Okay. Um, because if Ron is on Zoom. Oh, let's ask him. If there is a if there is an event right now, I don't know if things have changed a lot, I guess, since I dealt with it, but at one point in time they would have at some point opened a competitive grant program for mitigation grants, which we had applied for numerous times in the past, and there was a town match on those, but at least at that point it allowed us to sort of plan for it from a budgetary yeah. standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this just came through today in a phone call, so I'm, I, I don't have all the information. Maybe we should just address it in two weeks. Yeah. Do we have the luxury of time to do that? I think so. Yes. <laughs> That's Ron. That's Ron here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you have, you have time. The uh, mitigation that you're talking about, Duncan, is not uh, been applied for yet. That's That would be a next phase of FEMA if we go there. FEMA just simply said, uh, between USDA and FEMA, it's sort of a tug of war between the two when there's riverbanks short and streams related to road damage, which we had uh, there. They're parallel with about 20 feet between each other. The July storm started the slumping of one of the last areas in that whole stretch of the river that hasn't, hasn't been harbored yet. So if you, I think that's what you're talking about with the history out there. So for some reason, that section of the Lamoille River was not armored. So that's taking the beating right now where the rest of the, you know, and across the, right across there on the sort of the western or north side got really hammered uh, during July, but uh, as an unarmored uh, segment of shore bank or river bank. So I think when you, when you talk about timing, FEMA is simply trying to push forward with town decision making to decide if you are going to switch over and go to USDA and RCS, or you're going to stay in the FEMA world, which gets into the mitigation and evaluation with them. So they, they do want you to pick. You can't do both. Um, I can work more with the FEMA and Tom uh, can get the USDA uh, people on a phone together. You know, have a have a battle of wills or, or or intentions and costs and timing and all that stuff for you for your next meeting, so that you have some of the pros and cons of each program sort of presented to you in a coherent one pager. Sounds good to me. Okay, yeah. it's really they're really short staffed at NRCS. It's like impossible to get hold of them right now, which is why they can't do the engineering for us. They don't have the capacity. Oh, gotcha. Over. There was a time <laughs> back in the long distant past when you could actually get VTrans engineers to design those riverbank slumping. Uh, and they won't do it anymore? I, I don't know. I, you can check and see. Yeah. Um, but Because if they would do it, that might that would make the EPW grant the best. Yeah, right. I mean, you could, you could check and see if the district tax yeah. would do it. I mean, it's a, it's a fairly standard process to armor a section of riverbank as as is evidenced by how much of it there already is right. on that road. <clears throat> your, your road foreman was ready to go on July 12th, I think, but we stopped him from going ahead and work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready to truck in all the stone and everything, rent an excavator. Yeah. All right. Now that we're done with that topic, Let's thank you, Ron. We have two executive sessions. Well, well, Ron is still on the phone. Is there or, or the call? Is there is there anything else, Ron, that you could think of that are items that we're going to need to think about before next meeting? Uh, no, we've got a pretty good list of next steps uh, with the FEMA uh, series of twelve projects that the town has. Uh, I emailed those to Tom this afternoon just because we were talking about these scales. So I put it, I put them in one list so at least we could see what the next steps are. And, and there's so many different parts and pieces of people. That's part of the 
part of the delay in moving anything forward. But what I think Tom mentioned earlier, we have a really aggressive uh, FEMA grant person now named Jim. Uh, so Jim is a, a strong advocate for the town moving things forward right now. Good, good. And you, and you sent out something to all the people that had applied for buyouts? Um, no, I, it's uh, working with uh, LEARN, which is the Memorial Area Recovery Network. Um, and so they have case managers that are reaching out and um, I'm going to be advertising tomorrow on, um, on Thursday night. We have a webinar and for the buyout program. It's kind of a QA and a about, um, for homeowners, for, for them to take part and like how to, what the process looks like for them. And then also what the process looks like for the state and for uh, the town participation as well. And so that's Thursday. When is that? Uh, Thursday, Thursday night. When? Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m., I believe. That'll go. And is it remote? Yeah, it's on Zoom. It's a, it's a, like a webinar. Can you share that with all of us, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going to make sure all the people that were interested in the bio get that information. Somebody's That's it. Them. Somebody's already been like knocking on their door. Okay. It's great. So everybody who's already been, there were 15 people interested. They've already been um, approached and contacted. There were five other people who have since reached out. Um, and they've been contacted, and then this final big push, um, which is being pushed around Memorial County, larger than just Johnson, is uh, to get people to that webinar for more information um, to really help. Maybe I should go. Yeah. Are you good? Yeah. Are we ready for the executive session? Yeah, I am. I just wanted to make sure Mark was all set. I would move to enter executive session for the purpose of employment evaluation under 1DSA 313A3. Councilor Lewis? Yes. Yeah. Can I motion the second one now as well? Or do we have to come back? Is there any action coming out of the first one? No. It doesn't look like it. No. So. We can probably, yeah. I, mean, I believe we can, yeah. That's fine. If there's no action coming out of it, well, no, still inside of it. Still inside of it. Sorry. Okay. You know better than I do, okay? I don't see any reason why we can't. So we can go into take. both and come out and make a motion. I think as long as we make a motion to, okay. to deal with both issues separately, I don't see any reason why we need to come out and then go back in again. But so first for me, no. It's just me. <laughs> go for it. All right. So my second motion would be to, following the first executive session, to enter into, an, or to continue the executive session to discuss attorney-client communications under 1 BSA 313A1F. There's a motion on the floor. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Are you inviting Rosemary and Tom to both? Yes. Beautiful. No further discussion? Only if you want to. Aye. Right. All those in favor, say five by saying aye. 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 All right. All those opposed? Ayes have it. I'm enabling the waiting room now. All right.